Oh yeah. Hello. Uh, uh we're, we're here. Bitch tits. Oh, this is what no sleep does to me. Fuck. <laughs> Yes, you okay, Jesse? What, what the fuck? I'm just, I'm just tired. That's all. I'm probably gonna fucking pass out after we're done. Oh boy, that's fun. I thought you went to bed earlier yesterday. No. I told you guys to. I get felt to really oh, bad when I went to sleep at like three or I, four. I told a. you last. I told I was you. Like, right oh god, I went to bed pretty bad. But and I then was like, like, I stayed up until seven. I'm like, okay, Jesus. Okay, I know I didn't step that late, but Jesus Christ. Dude, you know what's funny is that uh, both Zaz and SDB beat me to, like, the the, the amount of, like, how long they were up. Because they were the last ones to leave. Oh, geez. Jesus Christ. You can always see how late uh, we've been up by the looking at the voice chat chat. I always wake up and I see, like, 15 different people uh, talking. And then uh, Zaz posts the thing about with power getting thrown into bed. It says goodnight. And then... Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's power yeah. in there. Yeah. Okay, maybe it wasn't 7 a.m. Maybe it was 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. Like, whenever I went into voice chat, I was just immediately hit with Viking tits. That was from you, Orange. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Oh, I heard you before. Battle cry. Alright, let's get started. Let me just pull up the project and we can get started. <sighs> oh, one sec. I've got to refill my water before we do this. Over. Hey, did you guys did you guys see the new pins Joshi made? Event ah! Pins and yeah, yeah. what? <laughs> I'm an echo event. Oh I saw your face there. Wait, what? I hit the wrong one. Oh no. Uh? Oh, face exposed. Balls exposed. <laughs> <laughs> now everyone can see that you are a human instead of a cube. Oh no! I'm a <laughs> now everybody sees oh, that you are in fact Rich Evans. I missed it. Put the face back on. No, I'm good. Ugh. I fucking I pinned that fan cam listen, of that character. Listen, that me. I want to push the Eve. You can you can always watch the vod. I was yeah, in like a yeah. fervor when I made that. I don't know what I was doing with my life. <laughs> I was thinking, oh yeah, that's right, I have to fucking right click to get the files to go away. Alright, there we go. Alright, uh, we, we wait get for, some we, shit ready. We wait for a con to get back and then we'll get started. The stream it, mother. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Your day so far. It's very moist in this, uh, in, the, in, in this, in the seagulls today. You what? should, like, Why? Stream, stream it to the, the Discord. That's the plan. Like, that's the fucking plan. The I've bag's been, under my eyes, that's man. That's the fucking... Impatient. I've been spending all day playing that AI Soma game. Shh. AI Soma? <laughs> Give me an I, 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 you guys should like very keep very uh 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 non-descriptive of your details about it, because I'm gonna play it eventually. Because I'm gonna play it eventually too. Bitch, I got the game day one. Let's go. Did you know that I the Somnium Files is only on sale for a couple more days? Why? I don't know what I was trying to do there. People, with the Heavens Word expansion DLC. <laughs> Wait, for I the Somnium Files? Yes, yes get the yes. Heavens Word expansion for I the Somnium Files. <laughs> That's oh, this is gonna be the intro of this session, fuck. Oh man. You can play up to level 60 for free. Is that in GTA San Andreas? CJ from Grove Street? Yeah, I was gonna be disappointed if that wasn't ASAT doing the default dance. If we made an Italian version, would it be called A Somnium? Alright, I have bought I the Somnium Files. I'll probably wow. never play it, but I hope to someday. <laughs> wow! Yes, how did you manage to get all of us to buy I the Somnium Is Files? That sale. Because it was that's on sale. A, that's a mad shilling. You know what? I don't want to spend $60 on this thing. It's a visual novel, but it's, it's fully voice it, acted. It's, so... it's not a. Well, okay, it has. It, there's gameplay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Quick time. There's gameplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know that. yeah, there's a it, lot of gameplay. It has about as much gameplay as Danganronpa has gameplay. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, it's a little... Yeah. 999, you know, yeah. you know. It is made by Chunksoft. 
I, I can I can I be real? I did not know uh the meme master of Umineko Flow Perfect or I guess when they cry in general, uh Flow Perfecto would have a slight uh dang and rompa spoiler on their channel. <laughs> Whoopsies. Luckily I did not se see anything. I sent it to Zaz and Zaz went, oh fuck. <laughs> Cause he he's played Dank and Rompa. Someone sent it to me. Wait, wait, which dog on Rumpa? Dang on Rumpa. Dingleberries, whatever the fuck. The first dang it grandpa. Oh. Oh, okay. I was more fond of dragon. Do we grandpa. got it? Do we got everybody in the Discord stream? Uh I believe I think Con we're still is still waiting on absent. Con. Con is still absent. I think she's probably oh, right, I forgot that... we're doing something. I forgot she that she had water. Getting water. Wait, Maybe oh yeah, getting water. water. She's fueling herself. Aqua why did you phrase it like that? <laughs> Hey, uh, fueling? I think I the dog. What do you mean by phrasing? Like, fueling? Hydrating. Give me fuel, give me fire, that give me that which I desire. Which I desire. Oh. Give me my gamer fuel. <laughs> yes, the gamer fuel. Who joined? Mountain Dew? Hey, speaking oh, Mountain of which, Dew joined. I got okay. my Mountain Dew right here. I got water, and then I got water. Also, random fun fact. Do you remember that uh, time I mashed the opening to Code Geass to the Sikonia opening? That was so fucking good, I'm so upset. <laughs> Do you know what's funny? I made that unlisted because I was scared it'd get claimed, and it got claimed anyway, and the very God. second I made it public, it got like twice the amount of views. It used um, to have five, and now it has ten. AC, from what I've learned, you can still get fucking claimed if you make it private. Yep. Yeah, that's why I just said fuck uh, it, and I made it public. None of the videos Did you I make are safe. Like, I I, I, I made a video where uh, a song yeah. from uh, <laughs> something a cover artist did, and I got I hit with that. a My dad's copyright. making bacon for a breakfast bacon sandwich. Oh. Ooh, nice. Ooh. At like AP, I have those before. They're good. Yeah, my dad is a complicated person with very easy taste buds. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I know, at 8.43 p.m.? Yes, <laughs> on a Monday? I, I, I made my dad that it's sandwich my dad. before. Come hey, on. Now, you know what, that's, that's totally true. Fruit. Breakfast for dinner is based. There's so many times where I've gone to a diner, I'm like, you know what? It's like 5 in the evening, I want an omelette, give me that shit. <laughs> hey, what? did you know that we're gonna read a visual novel? <laughs> uh, no uh, way! Yeah. Right in the mic. Should we start... <clears throat> we should probably start. Okay. Yeah. Umineko no Nakakoro ni was brought to you by the letter U. I thought it was brought to us by the letter H. Uh, not yet. Actually, it was yeah, brought to you Nekoparo. by the letter B for Beatrice. We're sponsored by I the Somnium Files. Buy it now, fuckhead. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. Time. Buy it now. Well, that's on the internet forever. Yes, what's wrong with me calling mm. calling mm. our viewers a fuckhead? <laughs> our singular viewer. Travis Touchdown does it all the time, and it's based in Epic. I can't that's believe you guys called me a fuckhead. Uh, Bone, that was not implied to you, but now no, you are. let's get to it, baby. Let's read. All right, reading time, let's go. All right. Yeah. Fuck, one sec. I believe this is a scene that Khan is having by herself. What? What do you mean, separate rooms? So wait, you and George Nissan stayed in different rooms on purpose? You... Yes. Um, is it really so strange? Jessica's cheeks have been stuffed with chocolate-coated... Chinsuko... Chinsuko biscuits that Shannon brought as a present from Okinawa. And all came flying out at, at, at Shannon when Jessica cried out. Shannon, why did you even go on a trip to Okinawa? You were even alone with George Nissan. Why did you not take the opportunity to fuck him silly? Oh! <laughs> why didn't you raw dog your man, bitch? <laughs> well, um, said there was a huge aquarium in Okinawa and invited me to go. And I like fish and stuff. Yeah, and stuff, but apparently not the shag carpet. No, that's not the point. <laughs> We're talking about a healthy guy and girl going on an overnight trip, right? And you're saying there weren't even any hugs and kisses, let alone whamming the oingo boingo into the velvet underground? Young, healthy, viral. <laughs> seriously, what's up with the guy? 
guy and girl staying in different rooms. What is this? 1924? Oh. As for kisses, <clears throat> no comment. But we did hug. George-san's chest was born. That's not the point! Ugh, oh, jeez. Why do couples like this exist? It's already the 80s. Guys are already allowed to wear high heels. We should go ahead and wear something else on like that. Hm. Ah, oh, dang it, my thing froze on me. Ah, oh, jeez, I can't take it anymore. I'm gonna move to America. At least they got it. From Shannon's point of view, it was an incredibly happy trip for various reasons. They just found their pace to be pretty irritating. For a while, Jessica chewed her, chewed her present. Complaining about romance and pretending to faint in agony on her bed. Shannon and George had chosen to go to Okinawa because there was a huge aquarium there. It is because an aquarium had given them an opportunity to start going out. Since their relationship had started at an aquarium, having their first overnight trip also, also be to an aquarium must have held some commemorative value. It's like a huge commemorative turning point. In your first overnight trip. How can you not make all kinds of progress there? You're killing me, Shannon! Ugh, but instead... You both got separate rooms? Oh, A couple taking two single rooms. Ah, jeez, seriously, what's wrong with you? Jessica's gonna knock my fucking Xbox <laughs> controller off my desk if I'm not careful, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> But we are both unmarried. <laughs> George Sun says showing restraint is good manners for a couple. Screw the manners, just fuck him already. <laughs> <laughs> I can say I can say I don't. <laughs> don't forget to save room for Jesus. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> what a hell of a way to start an episode. <laughs> Don't forget to save room for Jesus. <laughs> um, Jessica, I'm not sure I know what raw dogging means. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Jesus. Uh, you you, one. you ever heard of an Alabama slammer? <laughs> It's okay, Jesus. You can stay in the closet with a super Is that suit. some kind of weird sports drink? <laughs> George really do be like in bed and be like, don't worry, I'll let Jesus take the wheel. The greatest of all witches, Jesus Christ. Oh, our God is an awesome God. Lord and Savior. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I like to imagine Ken's just like in the other hallway listening to this. this isn't and he's like, supposed what the to be fuck funny, are they but you made about? it funny. Yes. And it sounds ridiculous in this current context. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> like I said, the whole point of this overnight trip was so you could overcome that stage, right? Mm. You should be way beyond just kissing and hugging by now. <laughs> M M lady, I don't know what you mean by that. But, but George Sana was a real gentleman with me until the end. That is, I, I mean, I also wondered if those things would happen, you know. But even though we are going out, I, I mean, it's not like we're married or, or anything. These things you seem to be expecting. Um, it should only be done after making a vow before God. Uh, um, uh, uh, and, uh, oh. Shannon's face got bright red. She made, a, she made a circle with both hands, restlessly intertwining and separating, making heart marks with them. Apparently the dramatic progress Jessica had looked forward to hadn't happened. It seemed to have been a very important experience for Shannon in her own way. In the end, whether Jessica was jealous of Shannon or made fun of her, it didn't change the fact that Shannon had a huge lead on her. Ah, I want a boyfriend too! Not me though, I'm single, ladies, I am also very high standard, I IQ. Check me out. <laughs> Are you good there, Joshy? I wasn't expecting- 
That Link to Kaneko's raw level three so early. Link to Kaneko's Twitter and <laughs> Tinder will be in the comments. Oh, I don't God. have a Tinder. Mm. I yeah, probably think of her retirement community. Do you honestly think you're gonna use a Tinder in a retirement community? <laughs> Fuck. Whoa. Hey, I don't know <laughs> what you like. I'm killing Joshy today. <laughs> yes, you are. Super I'm hard. fucking. I'm dying. I, I'm. Did I'm sure it's never bite. I have low HP right now. <laughs> oh my god, he has he's going to just fall on his bed. I can feel this orange dying on the inside from this, just putting both his hands to his face. Hey, it's fine. Bro, I know. Just, I'm just here drinking this Baja Blast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, then my goal is to make you do a spit take. Oh, uh, you can't. But not yeah, on I, your, I almost did that to myself. Not on your, I started fucking yeah, coughing not, everywhere. <laughs> yeah, but not on your equipment, though. I, I'm not a monster. Yeah, that's the plan. There you go. It's a visual mouth. <laughs> Alright, keep going. Okay. I'm gonna get Baja blasted. Okay. okay. <clears throat> I can't believe you got ahead of me! Ugh! Oh, even though we promised that we'd find boyfriends at the same time, you beat me. Ugh! Oh, not fair. Uh, um... You're a wonderful person, milady. So I'm sure you'll find someone wonderful much quicker than me. Don't try to console me, bitch! Shannon, you traitor, get out and shut up! <laughs> Jessica threw several cushions at her. Then one way she had an asthma attack and started to choke pretty badly. Shannon hurriedly ran over to a nearby side table and started searching around on top of it. A cute basket was placed there, and inside of it was Jessica's bronchiodilator. Shannon picked it up and handed it over to Jessica. Jessica's asthma attacks always came suddenly. Because of that, she always needed to carry this medicine around. She breathed in the medicine and after a while managed to overcome her choking as her asthma finally settled down. Shannon thought that this was a good chance to leave, and she tried to exit the room after bowing courteously. As she did, one more small cushion came flying and hit Shannon on the head. Bulldye. She noticed that Jessica was on the verge of crying, and half her face buried in her last and favorite cushion. That face was red and meek. M m lady Shannon. Be honest with me. Is my hair doing stuff weird? Do you want the long or the short version? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? I think your hair is very beautiful. Then, 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 are my eyes strange or my nose? Or is it the way I talk after all? Is that why I can't get a boyfriend? Of course not. Milady, you are wonderful enough as you are. And I think your charm will keep on increasing more and more from now on. But I'm the only one who can't find a boyfriend. Saku and Hina managed to get boyfriends, but only I can't. Hina. <laughs> Is it because I don't have any charm after all? You know, everyone says they'll bring their boyfriends to the cultural festival. And I was so sure I'd have a boyfriend before then, so I started bragging and... There's no way I'll get a boyfriend. I'm... I'm the only one. Before she realized that Jessica was shedding huge tears. Jessica didn't really feel like crying, and of course she did she felt like supporting Shannon's progress and love as a friend. However, she had cheered Shannon on, her true feelings had suddenly gotten mixed in, and she couldn't help but shed tears. Shannon understood Jessica's innocent and easily injured heart. The rough style of speech Jessica usually used. It was all just an attempt to protect that fragile heart. 
As a daughter and successor to the, successor to the Ashuramia family, and as a girl isolated in Orkenjima, the only person she could expose her true feelings to was Shannon. Shannon understood that. So, she strongly regretted acting smug, even if it was only a little. Sorry. I'm so weird crying like this. Sorry. <laughs> you are a wonderful person, my lady. There's no way you won't find a wonderful man. Sh Shannon, it's about time, right? <laughs> if you don't go quickly, Genji san and Mom will get mad. <sighs> I'm just fine, so hurry up. <laughs> Sorry for crying like this. I'm such a moron. Jessica was, in fact, a moron. <laughs> Jessica faced away, acting as though she didn't really want to, to trouble Shannon, waving her hand as though as though chasing Shannon away. Shannon took that as a sign that Jessica didn't want to be bothered anymore. Bowed her head and left the room. When Shannon's footsteps disappeared into the distance, Jessica lay down on her bed, still hugging a cushion. Her expression was a little, was still a little meek, with tears in her eyes. But for the first time in a long time, she had a very, very quiet and honest conversation with her heart. I also want to fall in love. Hey, who, the turned the, who turned the lights on? <laughs> the storm hasn't even happened yet, and there's already been a murder. Is Shannon murder happily? What? Uh, what's up? But what? Never mind. Go ahead. Never mind. Go ahead. Okay. Sure. So. Shannon happily watered the flower bed in the garden. She sensed someone's presence. She turned around, thinking of it, that if one of the family, the family, come to visit, she must greet them. But what she saw was that witch. B Beatrice Sama. It's been quite some time. How are you? Has your relationship with the one you love progressed since we last met? As Beatrice sat on the rose arch, she happily blew on her pipe. Sitting in a place like that would crush the roses. <laughs> and it might have been dangerous if the arch fell over. But this was a witch, after all. Showing concern for her safety was probably a waste of time. It, yes. Thanks to you, it's going smoothly. Naturally, the effects of my magic are immediate. Perhaps you feel your meeting was a predetermined fate. However, that is a mistake. Don't even think fate has anything to do with it. I... I understand that. <laughs> the witch was calling her attention to something. Two things, actually. First, that Chan's relationship with George was a fate that would be absolutely impossible under normal circumstances. Second, that the power of the witch was great enough to overturn that fact. <laughs> Shannon just got wrapped up in those sweet days, and started believing the illusion that all fate revolved around her. But she remembered the witch's words. Originally, her relationship with George had been impossible. No? Might be impossible in the future as well. What? Oh shit, my mic was unmuted. Hmm. One sec, sorry, I'm taking notes as we speak. <clears throat> oh, shit. <laughs> sorry, please forgive me. It's just like doctors. You cling to them when you're worried about your health, but after you're healed, you forget to even thank them. I've never been thanked as a witch, so I couldn't help acting a little rudely. Forgive me. The gratitude I feel has never slipped my mind. It's thanks to your power that I was able to achieve happiness, Beatrice. And without that power, 
The fate that brought George and me, me and George Summer together, would never have happened. I have never forgotten that. Sorry, sorry. It's not like I came here to bully you. You're far too cute for that. Being rude is just a part of my personality. Do forgive me. More importantly, I heard. I heard. So, you went on a trip alone with him? I imagine it must have been quite fun. <laughs> yes. yes. It was very... Um... Fun. Shannon's face suddenly lit up. The witch laughed lightly, as though amused by the speed of that transformation. Already the one you care for is more than the object of one-sided love. You are a pair of lovers now. Congratulations ought to be placed in order. <laughs> when two people are filled with love, nothing else is needed to establish a complete world. Perhaps you could call that a wonderful, ideal world. <laughs> Even witches would be jealous. I know I am. Just look at me over here. Beatrice <laughs> laughed pleasantly. The smile made it look as though she blessed the lover's rendezvous from the bottom of her heart, without a trace of malice. After that day, Beatrice had shown herself before Shannon every once in a while. Even now, Shannon thought of her as an unsettling being. However, she was also indebted to this person for the magic that led to her current relationship with George. So Shannon tried with all of her might not to act surprised or scared. That's right. Uh, Beatrice Sima. I bought some sweets as a souvenir from our trip. Would you, um, like to try some too? Oh? A souvenir for a witch? Not even a witch who boasted of living for 1,000 years. And imagine that she'd receive a souvenir from a sweet lover's trip. When she saw that surprised expression, Shannon thought of this witch as a friend for the first time. <laughs> An eastern cookie made from wheat flour and lard! To wrap that in western chocolate is truly a blending of the Japanese and western styles, the Silk Road of Sweets! What? What's so funny? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> My apologies. The witch, who surely held a terrifying power, was chomping down on sweets one after another, making a sound like a squirrel suffering stuffing walnuts into its mouth. After a while, Shannon couldn't conceal her laughter. Hmm. A good meal. Finally, some good fucking food. I should serve you some Dos Vita from Nero one of these days. Roses are the symbol of eternal love. I believe a rose dose would be appropriate for you now. Which is in a great mood, fully enjoying the modern candy. Um, here. I truly am grateful. I believe you've done more than enough for me already, so I'm returning this. The thing that Shannon had softly set on the table was a gold-colored butterfly brooch. There is no need to return it. If you continue holding that, your relationship should remain firm in perpetuity. Maybe it was the power of magic that brought us together. But I think... Only the two of us working together can turn that into something that lasts forever. Hmm. Love and roses are the same. Too much fertilizer causes the roots to rot. 
Some flowers cannot be raised without hard work. In that case, do as you wish. You may wear it or keep it in a box. That is my goodwill given to you. Having you return it to me won't please me at all. Uh, m my apologies. That's not what I... <laughs> no harm has been done. That brooch is already yours. If you treasure that proof of our friendship, it would indeed bring me some comfort. You may hold onto it and gain its benefits. Or you may keep it in a box. Which other one? <laughs> If you wish, you may even give it to another who is worrying about love. Or you could simply treasure it. Of course, it would pain my heart if you wasted it. According to Beatrice, she had appeared several times in the past in response to a person's summons. To give them some tool imbued with magical power. However, most people u use that power uh, to resolve their worries. They quickly grew unsettled by it, forgot their former gratitude, and threw away the tools they had been given with disgust. So, it is quite rare to, for me to be thanked for my goodwill. In fact, this might even be the first time. <laughs> the witch laughed heartily, but it looked like a sad laugh in Shannon's eyes. She herself has been like that in the past. No, maybe she was still like that now. It was definitely a witch with a strange and terrifying power. Most people probably wouldn't want to stick around her if they could help it. Surely even those who had relied on that strange power sometimes felt fear rather than gratitude as a result. It must have deeply hurt the witch to have that happen over and over. At the time, she had started thinking that way. She tried to stop being frightened of Beatrice. This was surely something that had tormented the witch for over a thousand years. Maybe she really liked those sweets. Beatrice, who spoke, n who's, who normally spoke abusively, uh, praised the black tea that Shannon served her and looked to be remarkably high spirits. After doing that for a while, the witch and the servant grew animated in their discussion of the trip with George. Things Shannon actually knew about Beatrice was surprisingly few. First off, she was a, she was a ghost-like being who appeared in unexpected places at unexpected times. It seemed that not everyone could perceive that she was there. Apparently everyone has something called a wavelength, and the ability to perceive witches varies greatly among different people. Only Shannon and Cannon can interact with her enough to exchange words like this. There were a few people who could sense her presence, but most people couldn't even feel that much. But Beatrice said, Kraus and his wife in particular had zero magical talent. And no matter how much she followed them around, they would never notice her. Once earlier, when Shannon messed up and Natsuhi got really mad at her, Beatrice started playing around, hitting Natsuhi on the head with her pipe. I see. Natsuhi really doesn't notice a thing. But Shannon, watching that, had burst out laughing without thinking, and had gotten scolded even more. One moment. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, I'm still taking notes. A lot of this is actually pretty important. At least uh, I feel it is. Uh, I was say the. I was say when I say one second, I heard the disconnect. I got worried, but yeah. No, I think it's just my mic being a dip. Then what about the master? I hear he's been doing research in magic, so I'm sure he'll be able to introduce you, Beatrice Sama. Oh, what the fuck? Hey. Kinzo is the same. He also has a pitiful lack of magical talent. It's the blood. He has so little talent that I pity him. Hmm? As soon as they started talking about Kinzo, it like the atmosphere on Beatrice had changed. 
She had spoken about Kraus and the rest's lack of magic talent as though she looked down on them. But she spoke of Kinzo in a different way. Anyone connected to the Ashirmia family would know about Kinzo's legend of the gold. According to that, Kinzo was given the gold for summoning the witch Beatrice. In other words, she must have had some kind of relationship with Kinzo. That was because... <sighs> he succeeded despite having not even a scrap of talent. He kept studying by himself like mad and managed to become a magician. Through some godforsaken means. And that's something really incredible, right? Indeed. The witch, who normally looked down on people, was uncharacteristically strong offering her praise. When, while she lambasted him by saying he had no talent, she praised his efforts. And then, the master summoned Beatrice Sama with the power of magic. Indeed. Well, I only answered the summons on a whim. After all, in this period where magic has long been denied, here was a man who was without a scrap of talent, yet so desperate to succeed. I thought I'd drop by and poke some fun at him, and that's when my luck ran out. <laughs> the choice of words highlighted how much of a disaster this, this had been for her. Jen hesitated over whether it would be safe to continue that this discussion. The Beatrice continued on, continued on her own, ignoring Shannon. After all, his contract did have a proper format instead of rules. Various procedures were mixed up, but... Well, in deference to his enthusiasm, I graciously accepted his contract. Then, I gave him a mountain of gold. Plain and simple. And then the master used that gold and succeeded in business, and grew his wealth into what it is today. Indeed. His talent in magic was minimal, but he seems... It seems he has a knack for business and gambling. Along with his idiot fucktard of a son. Or perhaps it was due to the bravery and madness that led him to risk everything on unreasonable bets. <sighs> madness sometimes acts as magical power. Sorry, I'm taking notes. That's all right. I see. If you look at it that way, perhaps it isn't quite fair to say he was completely lacking in magical talent. <laughs> oh. She didn't feel like she was daydreaming. Well, everyone in the Ashirmia family knew the story of how Kinzo idolized black magic, summoned a witch, and received the gold. In actuality, it was all rambling that no one believed in. And now Shannon was having the story confirmed by the witch herself. She felt a little flustered by this incredibly secret, incredible secret that only she knew. Once Kinzo gained his famed fortune, he could realize every dream that can be satisfied by objects obtainable in the human world. And in the end, he searched for the truth of this world. Plain and simple. The truth of this world? The single element that makes up the world. Kinzo, who had gained everything one can obtain in the human world, searched for that. The final desire humans seek. A single element. She didn't remember the witch using that word before. When Beatrice saw Shannon trying to remember what that was, 
She laughed bitterly, waving her hand and saying there was no need to worry. I underestimated Kinzo just a tad. Just a tad, dear. I truly didn't expect him to display such power. And thanks to that, I'm in this state. <laughs> I've been so in it's now without even a friend to drink tea with. No matter whom I try to talk to, my voice doesn't reach them. And no matter where I go, I cannot do anything. It's rather boring. You're talking to yourself in the mirror more than once, trust me. Such boring decades. <laughs> and she laughed in self-derision. She tapped her teacup with her finger. It made the light sound of pottery. Shanna didn't know whether the word self-derision was really an accurate expression to describe the look on the witch's face. Now, Shanna didn't understand everything, but she could more or less figure out the, the situation. It was probably a topic that she couldn't press the witch on easily. Not unless the witch started talking about it herself. From everything that she had set up until now, Beatrice, who had been summoned by Kinzo's magic, could not leave this island for some time. She lost her power in her form, leaving, living her days in boredom. During this time, her words had reached Shannon, who never forgot to show sincere respect for the witch. And Shannon had helped the witch regain her power, if only a little bit. As a result, this was now possible for the witch to drink tea with Shannon like this. Beatrice, Emma, what in the world was that mirror you told me to break? Ah, uh, that. Long ago, it seems various things happened on the islands around this area. Because of that, malignant forces gathered here and began to draw in an evil distortion. It seems a traveling eastern magician or something built a shrine for the repose of souls and sealed them in there. That in itself has nothing to do with me, but unfortunately that magical power rested on a different foundation than mine. Unbelievable, isn't it? Europeans! <laughs> it created a strong interference with my magic and was extremely bothersome. Is that how it was? And I just assume it existed only to seal you, Beatrice Emma. Yeah, I was not its target. But I was a divine mirror. As a result, my power was sealed away. To use food as an example, maybe it would go something like this. Let's say the western food I ordered is being made in the kitchen. However, when they try to set the table, the area for the guest seat is in the Japanese style with Japanese style dishes. So the kitchen is unable to serve a plate that would be out of place, and no matter how long I wait, my western food won't arrive. It's something like that. So, you destroyed that Japanese-style guest seating and returned the area to a blank slate for me. Thanks to that, the meal I had ordered was finally delivered and my power came back. So to speak, you could say. Kesera, whatever you would say of it. However, so far only the aperitif, aperitif has arrived. It will still be quite some time before the main dish. I am now. As I am now, I'm even more fragile than a shoe store fairy. They exist, by the way. <laughs> Ugh. What's so amusing? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> I just thought your metaphor was pretty funny. I never would have thought to use a story about food as a metaphor for magic. 
I thought it a rather skilled comparison, but I certainly didn't expect it to be laughed at. Humph! I'm a bit offended. You've offended me. A slightly, apologize. A slightly sulky expression that. rose to the witch's face. It wasn't a strange expression at all to be appearing on the face of someone's friend as they enjoyed their tea. Although I may not look it, I was known for doing extremely brutal things in the past. I've gotten soft. Ugh, unfortunately, in all the wrong areas. Now I can't even have a foolish discussion while drinking tea with a human. She was probably talking to herself. The beach trays into the sea of birds tracing the horizon. She put her tea to her lips again. The clouds have come out. When the ocean loses its brilliance, it's nothing more than a grey puddle. You think so? I think the ocean is a beautiful deep blue, even when it gets cloudy. She's sorry, I'm sorry, notes. I'm taking notes. Sorry. And if you want to see Khan's notes, press the cube at underneath the description. I don't think they can see the notes. They, That's for theater nobody goers, can see I the think. Notes. It's only for people who are in the. Oh, that's funny. not public? No, it's only for the people in the funny little stream room. Oh. Yeah. I thought that was public. Nobody can. People will be able to see the notes after if everything is done. Is anyway, a join the Discord. Or a bad thing, cause wow, I have a lot of notes to, that people are gonna need to need little glasses for. It will be very Thank funny you. reading all of these when everything is done. <laughs> I can assure you of that. It'll be our summer special. Yeah. Oh great, my summer special is gonna give everybody tachycardia. What? Oh no, wait, no, that's not the word I was looking for. Fuck, what was it? Stigmatism. That's it. Uh, gives me conniptions. Maybe <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> hey, the witch knows the deep meaning b behind Shannon's words. She laughed lightly and set down her empty teacup. It seems those things buried in your eyes aren't black pebbles anymore. How is it? Do you see how it feels for furniture to be reborn as a human? Yes. I never knew the world was this kind. Oh, I'm yelling, hold on. Instead of her relationship with George, Shannon's face had grown brighter more often. Well, it made everything go smoothly, and it even changed her fortune. Shannon made less mistakes in her work than she had before. The family members' opinions of her were slowly starting to change. Just the other day, she'd been surprised when Kraus, who rarely exchanged words with her, had suddenly started talking to her. You've been wearing a splendid smile more often lately, haven't you? Oh, fuck. Has something good happened? <laughs> N no. But every day is fun. Yes. <laughs> hmm. Wonderful. It goes without saying that coffee is more delicious when poured with a smile. Ah. Could I ask for that smile once more? Leave me for a servant and I will roast your balls and cock on an open fire. Whoa! Where catch me from? first. Jesus Christ, my son. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta catch me first. <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> my man Kraus zooming. <laughs> Strike while the iron's hot. I guess his balls. Huh? Y yes, sir. That had become a chance for Shannon to gain confidence in herself. Of course, it didn't go beyond her own heart. It wasn't so big a, cha a change that anyone would notice. She began to change bit by bit. 
Shannon understood it clearly. Knowing love was the same as gaining a soul. Same as being reborn from furniture into a human. There was absolutely nothing mistaken in Beatrice's words. By knowing love, Shannon had learned what it was to be human. These have been unusual snacks. It was time well spent. It's probably about time for you to return to your work. So let us end our tea party now. After all, it seems a certain person doesn't like seeing us drink tea together. Huh? Butch grabbed a teaspoon and flipped it with her fingers, sending it up into the air. After that, it was, it was launched by the fingers of some individual person and flew straight into a nearby bush. The bush, shook, the bush shook violently and Cannon came out. Seeing he'd been there for some time, watching their tea party. The spoon was gripped in his hands. I caught it, bitch. If he hadn't caught it in an instant, it might have let it hit him hard on the forehead and caused him to start oozing blood. Yeah. And that's some sensitive skin. Do not worry. <laughs> Do not worry. Our tea party is over now, Cannon. You can still sit here and drink from this bowl like a good little lapdog, though. <laughs> How long were you there? If you had called to us, I, I'd have poured you some tea, too. I imagine that you didn't want to interrupt a pair of women talking, right? <laughs> That's a stretch for you. Cannon yeah, kept silent, but there seemed to be a slightly hostile look in his eyes. On the outside, he acted with respect. But unlike Shannon, Cannon did not trust the witch. When Beatrice had hit the table with her pipe, the tea set turned into gold butterflies that flew upwards all at once. They scattered in every direction, and the cleanup was already done. It was fun, Shannon. Let us meet again if the chance arises. My magical power is still quite lacking. It's tiring even to show myself. If you're that tired, never appear again. Cannon said it in a small voice, but the witch seemed to have heard it perfectly. She giggled but did not reply. <laughs> Shannon, sweetheart, tell me more about George at our next tea party. There are no snacks sweeter than a person's love life. So tell me everything. <laughs> See you again. Have a nice day. Beatrice's body also became gold butterflies, which scattered in all directions and disappeared. It was a fantastical and beautiful scene, like a blizzard of gold leaf. For a while, Shannon then quietly watched the witch's exit. Cannon approached her from behind and spoke with an expression that was drastically different from her from hers. Mason, didn't I tell you to stay away from her? Beatrice Ma isn't that bad of a person. Yes, she might be a little shady, but the fact that only we can see her is suspicious enough. That thing isn't human. Who knows what she might be planning. Plus her voice for mine is fucking annoying. <laughs> Ouch! Not your actual voice, Con. I'm doing a thing. Cannon doesn't like Beatrice. Okay, thank you. Doing a bit. Just a bit. Alright. Cannon, Con, I think that's a little rude. There was a of sternness in Shannon's voice, which was unusual for her. Cannon, who knew her well, she must have sounded extremely stern. Cannon, looking ex excessively surprised, continuing, considering Shannon's tone, fell silent. It's true that Beatrice Summer is different from humans. 
She has a terrifying power, so I think it's right for us to fear and respect her. Still, I think it's incredibly rude to despise her just because she isn't human. I understand what you're trying to say, Nason. You've changed ever since she gave you that brooch. It's like you're her prisoner. Wait, what? She brought you and George Sama together, and now you're indebted to her. Don't say things like that. That thing isn't human. We don't know what she's thinking. So you mustn't trust her. And we aren't human either. Nason. Cannon's words grew more serious. This was probably gouged at Shannon's heart. She bit her lower lip and hung her head. We are furniture. Even if we receive names and are treated as humans, that won't change the manner of our birth. You are no longer furniture. The Zeus Beach has given her, which had made her happiest, floated through Shannon's mind. I am not furniture. No, you are furniture. We are less than human. Nason, you're just pretending to have forgotten. Pretending to be human. You, you know that as well as I do. I am not furniture. I'm human. No, you aren't. We have never possessed what it takes to be love or be in loved. Or be loved. <laughs> love or be loved. <laughs> Cannon's criticism seemed to have shifted away from Shannon's meetings with the witch. Shannon picked up on that quickly. I heard from the lady. Seriously, what were you thinking? I can't believe you would go on a trip with George Sama. You've forgotten your place as furniture. You've just been tempted by that witch, mistakenly believing that you've become human. furniture. Lesser beings inferior to humans. But if it were possible to make up for what we lack, wouldn't that be the same as becoming human? Such a thing can never happen. No, it could. If we can do that, we won't be future anymore. Remus, shut up! I'm in the middle of a moment here! No! 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 no. Bandog! Bandog! Sorry, one sec. Hi, Remus. The dog. Oh. Is that Remus? I'm in the dog again. I'm not. Bye, Remus. Prepare to die! No. <laughs> die 1,000 deaths! <laughs> You're yawning a lot. I am. I'm tired. You're she yawning more than the guy who didn't control. get any Just sleep go. the other night. <laughs> Just go to sleep, five head. Uh oh
Oh, don't I leave? Oh, he's back. Hello? Chilling. Yeah, Sally, uh... Do you see that oh, so apparently, not only my dog wanted outside of my room, but my sisters are freaking out because my other sister's cat apparently tried to escape her bedroom. Oh, um, pardon me. So, shit happened. No. Uh, yeah, I know how that feels. Okay, my so cat uh, tried to jump out the window. Jesus. And right, he succeeded. It. It's on the gable bridge. Back to it. At our house. I think I already back read the it. line. Did I read this line? <laughs> Ridiculous. As if you could ever do such a thing. Cannon spat those words out, but did so weakly and turned away. He was probably giving up. After all the suffering he'd undergone during those days he loved his furniture, his heart was firmly sealed. You can do it too, Cannon. You can become a normal human. Stop it. That's the witch talking. Yes. Beatrice did not talk me. By obtaining a single element of this world, we can become human. Or rather, nobody's human. If they don't have that. That's why people spend their entire lives trying to gain that single element. I don't understand what you're saying, Mason. I don't want to listen to ranting. Then I'll teach it in a way even you can understand. Look, see what I'm pointing at? Hmm? Huh? <laughs> Jenny quickly, quietly pointed at the sea toward the horizon. He didn't understand what she meant, but couldn't do anything except look between the horizon and Shannon's expression. Jenny po posing a riddle. The sea. Kanukun, what color does the sea look to you? It was an extremely simple question. For a while, Cannon tried to guess at the meaning behind it, but he couldn't think of anything, so he answered obediently. It's a hazy, dark gray color. So what? <sighs> Fuck. Yeah. Dang, dude, shake the sleepies off. Objectively speaking, the sea, lit up beneath a clear, cloudy sky, would probably be described best by Cannon's words. I hate what. Fucking bone just posted in the fucking life general. No, you don't. Yes, yes, you do. I do. I do. Yeah, you do. You need to be I am not love. a fan of that, dude. They see each other as brother and sister. This is almost unbelievable. Yeah, as what Japan the does. Fuck, man. fuck off. Really? <laughs> 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 God, that reminds me of that one fucking scene of Darling and the Franks where, she, where that girl's like, you know, I see you as kind of like a sister hero, and he's like, yeah, I totally, I totally get that, and she's just looking there like so fucking depressed, like, I didn't want you to agree with me. <laughs> it's like the visual you know like, I love you as a sister, as but you. I love you as a woman even more. Ugh. Okay. And, ugh. Finally, the world's first anti-incest visual novel. Oh no! <laughs> Wait, first this time. Missed. But as Shannon closed her eyes and smiled, she shook her head slightly. It looks deep blue to me. Is that what you meant? Like how Japanese people use the word blue to refer to a green traffic light? <laughs> Wait, what? I, I don't know. I'm gonna have to look that one up now. Maybe it's like, maybe blue is like, in has reference to things meaning go. Oh, yeah, I guess that might be true. Like, it, like that just could be it. Like, yeah, it's go. Going. It's blue. No, 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 no. No. The sea is deep blue. If I understand and you don't, then that's the difference between us. Yeah, 
And he bit his lower lip and was silent for a while. I understand. Kanon Kun, would you stick out your hand? His cannon was taken aback and able to understand what she was saying. Uh, she took his arm and opened the palm of his hand. Shannon softly said something there. It was the magic brooch which she had, which, uh, she had received from Beatrice. The magic charm should look like a golden butterfly that could bring love to fruition. This is hers. A cool fact. No, this is Patrick. I don't know who Patrick it's is. Mine. So think of it as me and treat it with respect, okay? Yeah. After being spoken to like that, he couldn't just throw it away. Kenan didn't know. Kenan didn't know what he should do, so he stood there confused for a while. The brooch still on the palm of his hand. Kenan put the palm of her hand on top of Cannon's, and the brooch was worn by both of their hands. This charm holds true magical power. I'm sure it'll teach you an important emotion, Kanon Kun. There's nothing to be learned from that person's magic. No, there is something. So wear it. If that's embarrassing. I hear it's okay if you just hide it in your pocket. Ridiculous. As if I'd let that magic of let the magic of that person lead me astray. Even as he said that, Cannon couldn't be cold hearted towards something that Shannon was urging him to take. In the end, Cannon took it and, agree and agreed reluctantly, saying he'd prove that he wouldn't surrender to the witch's power. Shannon smiled and nodded back. I'm sure you'll be able to learn something important from it. And I'm sure you can become human. And when you do, I'm sure this ocean will look like a beautiful blue to you as well, Canon Khan. Gray is gray no matter how many times you look. That's wrong, Canon Khan. It only looks like that because you have no cock. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? I didn't Wait, what? Oh, I can't because you have no dick, Cannon. You're a eunuch. Uh. You're a soy boy. I am not a soy boy. Dude, Cannon is not a soy boy. Makoto Naegi is a soy boy. Yeah, Makoto Naegi is a soy boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I will beat the soy out of you, Makoto. I swear to hey, God. Oh, oh. <laughs> Cannon, maybe if you got rid of that E E S parade, you'd get some oh, bitches on your dick. No. Or better yet, <laughs> maybe if you got rid of that like weird ass parade, Cannon. I like, like Kamaro Naegi. Because of the howling winds, he hadn't been able to catch the main point of what she just said. So Shannon said it once more, a louder for the people in back. The single element of the world. She spoke once more of the world where it existed, where the sea was deep blue. I'm sure you'll be able to see a deep blue ocean too. After all, without love, it cannot be seen. That was actually a kind of sweet sentimental moment. I'm sorry I ruined it with the cock. Who is that? No, I love the cock. It is Cannon. Somebody clip on that, because wow, that. that is going to be taken out of context. I, I meant it to. It was rare for Kinzo I to, to be taken out of context. his study. It... Oh, the hey, fact that he... hold on a second. Crimson, you may want to delete your comment in the Umi notes. Oh, man. Yeah, uh, oh, sorry oops. about that, but... Yeah, not that many no fun people out here. Naomi notes. No, no jokes, oh, only conversation. It was rare for Kinzo to leave his study. However, the fact that he hadn't didn't mean his noble research had been suspended. He may have left the study because of the change in his mood. That didn't mean that he, uh, he, 
uh, the thought filling his head were any different from those he'd had while inside the study. Kenan knew that no matter what the time, speaking to Kinza when he didn't want to be spoken to would always disturb his research. It's cloudy out there. Will it get worse? Yes. According to the weather report, it could rain at any time. Shall I bring an umbrella? It will not come to that. Leave me alone for a while. If my children ask, so they do not know where I am. I am busy on a journey through my own thoughts. Certainly. Then, if you would excuse me. Before <sighs> fucking hell. Oh. Before Cannon finished bowing, Kinzada returned to his own world, having forgotten Cannon's presence completely. And once again he began rambling to himself. Amidst those words, the name of that witch popped up many, many times. Oh, Beatrice! My hand will not reach your smile! What can I do to revive you? What can I do to make you smile at me once more? What is lacking? My research? My materials? My catalyst? Was it the magical power or, or luck? Or an oracle? Oh, Beatrice. What can I do to see your face one more time? Whoa! As Ken listened to his master's weeping voice when his, both his back turned, he turned around just once. When he did, right behind his isolated old master was the shadow of a person who shouldn't have been there. It was the witch. At once thinking that the witch was be plotting to do Kinzo some harm, Cannon dashed back to Kinzo and tried to form a shield with his body. When he saw the expression on the witch's face, that emotion of his vanished. Because Beach's ex expression was sorrowful. Or maybe pitying. Or maybe pitying. Ah. You fool, Kinzo. Can't you see me, even though I am here? Right behind Kinzo, as he repeated the witch's name over and over, desiring to be reunited with her more than anything else, was the witch herself. Yet Kinzo didn't notice anything. When Beatrice had to rest her hand on his shoulder, he didn't notice. Why? Why does my hand not reach Beatrice's smile? To the age of the moon? The cycle of the comets? The alignment of the planets? What is lacking? What is? What is? It's useless, Kinzo. Without love, it cannot be seen. <laughs> Kinzo took the brooch he had received from Shannon out of his pocket. To learn something new, would he be able to, able to glimpse something he couldn't see until now? <clears throat> Without love, it cannot be seen. He looked at Kinzo's back once more, which can no longer be seen there. Oh. Chapter break. Wow, he is Chapter break, 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 break. <sighs> oh hell yeah! I love this fucking this fucking thing. Oh, this meanwhile, is a different Nigarashi. scene. Yeah, meanwhile, in Higurashi. The biggest fall so, event for the Ashrami family was the family conference in October. So can I share something? Mm -hmm. Uh, there there is in fact in the fighting game a stage that is related to the school. And in that stage in the background, don't look it up because there is some spoilers there. Um, you can see in the crowd uh, a crowd that Tomataki is there. <laughs> He's taking photos oh. and shit of the of the crowd. Oh uh, wow, yeah. it's Higurashi. <laughs> but to Jessica, there was another major event that came before that: the school culture festival. Jessica liked school. To her, it was a place where she could let out some stress she'd built up from the rigid lifestyle she was forced to lead at home. For today's culture festival, she formed a group with her friends, and announced they'd perform some light music on a temporary stage. They prepared and practiced for this over and over until today, always anxiously awaiting this day's arrival. There was one thing that worried her. She looked at the clock, 
There was still a little time, but she felt uneasy. Would that person really come? After taking a single deep breath, her heart jumped with her when all of her friends suddenly started speaking in shrill voices. No way! Hina's boyfriend is so awesome! Isn't he? Isn't he? Rin's boyfriend looks really smart. Is it true that the guys give glasses, Beast? No way, no way! My husband will be a pretty boy! <laughs> I did that way too fucking well. It may not be like this for all girls. At least at Jessica's school, the cultural festival is basically a boyfriend exhibition. Pardon me. Jessica didn't have a boyfriend. She had many friends of the opposite sex, but no special only one. But Jessica was a little famous around the school, and everyone thought it'd be natural for her to have a fitting partner. Furthermore, her pride led her to pretend that this was true. She somehow managed to keep them, keep them fooled until this year. But for various reasons, she hadn't been able to escape this year's cultural festival. Uh, fucking... Uh, Jesse, well, Brian, uh... is your boyfriend here? So, um, I'm just gonna state, state this out. Uh, this is exclusive to the PS3 sprites, and yeah. uh, Steam and original, it's just her regular attire. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the green is cool. Yeah, this is her school outfit. You will only see yeah. this for this one episode. Take it in. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, yes. that's a cute outfit. Okay, knock my pop filter out of place. It's back up. Uh, what? No, looks like he's not here yet. <laughs> Maybe he's busy with work. <laughs> uh, kill me now. Why not just borrow cannon? So what kind of person is he, Jesse? At least give us a hint. What kind of relationship? What kind of relationship? Awesome, so he's a working man. Will he come in a suit? Of course we'll be wearing glasses, right? Yeah? <laughs> hey, he doesn't actually exist, right? If you come clean now, we'll let you join us. Let's cry together through the years of this through this year's cultural festival. He exists, he exists, he exists. I told you, he really exists. Uh... <laughs> Jessica's bitter smile was covered with cold sweat. Kind of seemed doubtful whether she really had dis uh, deceived her sharp witted friends. Okay. Then, how about making a fake boyfriend and taking him with you? Uh, uh, fake? Uh, who? I can't think of anyone who'd do that! Sure as hell not Goda! <laughs> Dude looks old enough to- <laughs> Madame, I'm here to escort you to the cultural festival! Bro, well, you're posting <laughs> that in the wrong channel! <laughs> oh, shit, I- oh yeah, I posted in the wrong channel. Shan's ridiculous plan surprised Jessica, uh, surprised Jessica into hysterics. Even so, it was more, it was probably more realistic than this crazy method running through her head about getting a boyfriend in the big rush before the cultural festival. For example, what about Cannon Con? Cannon Con? No, 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 no way, no way. Uh-uh. Anyway, I'm sure Cannon Con is work on the day of the festival. And I don't want to bother him. Of course, I've already checked the schedule. If Canon Kun has that day off. Why are you always so clever when it comes to stuff like this? It, no, wait! What the hell am I saying? It'd be worse if he's off. I can't put him away from a precious day off just for my own vanity. That's something my dad would do. If you don't pull Cannon Con away, he'll always be shut away by himself. I feel called out. <laughs> so I think it'd be perfect if you drag him out of his shell. I feel even more called out. You, 
You think so? No, but I feel bad for him. Then I can throw out options. How about meekly confessing to everyone that you don't have a boyfriend? True, it may be terribly embarrassing. But you'd only have to endure for the short and yet long time before graduation. To prepare lovers, there's no sweeter honey than the face of a single person with an inferiority complex. Star. Shut up! You aren't really worrying for my sake, are you? You're just teasing me, right? Oh! This girl wrestled about with Shannon, her eyes teary. Shannon was unfazed, laughing with her usual smile. Yes. Yes. This is to get you back for making fun of me and George Summer all the time. Listening to Shannon's comeback, the likes of which didn't happen uh, even once a year, Jessica hugged her cushion and rolled about in her bed, pretending to faint in agony. Ooh. She couldn't stand Shannon's smile, which looked so triumphant. But right now, she was the only person Jessica could talk with. So she, uh, sh uh, she could choke her to death with her cushion later. Is it really so bad, milady? It's a cultural festival, but it's also a chance for you to have fun with Canon Kun. No, that may be true, but. No, 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 no. Jessica buried her head in her favorite pillow to hide the fact that her face had grown bright red. And she grumpily chewed the fingernails on her thumb. It really was a reaction to be appreciated. Shannon and Jessica were above about the same age, of the same sex, and friends. And they both were right in the middle of puberty. They could never talk enough about love. That's why they could talk freely about the topics to each other. So, Jessica had heard a lot about Shannon and George's love was progressing. And Shannon had heard a lot about uh, what type Jessica liked. What kind of man she might be interested in. I think Jessica's reaction is probably rude for us to go into precisely what those things were. However, this story won't get anywhere if we just have Jessica rolling around forever, so let's dive in. Holy shit, who's writing this? Uh, Ryuka Shio 7, who do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Jessica had been thinking about Canon ever since he'd, he'd shown up. It's extremely rare for young men to visit Rokenjo. So maybe it was natural for Jessica, a girl in puberty, to develop an interest in Canon. But if anyone said that, it would destroy the romantic ideas of a maiden's pure heart and love at first sight. Hey, how old is Canon again? About the 16. same age as Shannon, yeah. Wait, is Shannon 16? Yes, they're both 16. Alright. Uh, We've talked about this constantly with the whole, hey, George is like way older than Shannon thing. <laughs> Wait, did I say Shannon? I meant Jessica. Just because oh, Jessica's 18. 18. Okay. So there's an age gap, but it's not like it's only two years. Hmm. That's basically pedophilia according to Twitter. According to according to the law and some <laughs> Anyway uh, So back in it So he's gonna ask persistently about what his hobbies were, what his favorite food was, and what type of girl he liked. The answer was always shut up, please go away. <laughs> Even the Shannon it was clear that Jessica was infatuated with Canon. Come on. Come on, come on. Isn't this a good chance to take Kanon Kun on a date? But, 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 but Kanon Kun might also have someone he like so. Ugh. Wouldn't he take it badly if I made him go with me just to show off? People who aren't honest with themselves, like you are. What was that word I learned from George Sama? That's right. I think it was Sundora. Apparently, they'll be overage in a decade or so. <laughs> what did George mean by this? What did he mean? Wow, George Nissan sure is incredible. Managing to foresee future trends like that. Awesome. No, wait! <laughs> Stop changing the subject! George is absolutely. Are you saying I'm living right. in the wrong decade? I <laughs> <laughs> give up! We have to give her a time machine. <laughs> it took several days of wasted efforts, but in the end, Jessica agreed to go uh, to the plan of having Cannon pretend to be her boyfriend.
Novelette. Yes, my lady. Did you call me? This regretted <coughs> calling out at such a bad time. Cannon always looked so sullen, but he had some bad days and some better days. Unfortunately, this reaction was the former. N -n -n no! Um, well... Uh... Mm. All that confidence and effort she built at practicing in front of a mirror all night swiped out in about five seconds. Jessica turned bright red and hung her head. When he saw that, Cannon sighed. Jessica thought that he was exasperated with her, and her face went pale. Damn it, I wanted to do a bit. Fuck. <laughs> I missed my opportunity. I'm gonna do it here now. <coughs> Milady, you be like, I, I, you, wow, I. Milady, what? Speak. Spit it the fuck out. What do you want to say? When I'm listening. We're all listening. And you're doing nothing. This is nonsense. You can't even use words anymore. Go to the hell outside for once. Damn. God damn. Get a job or something. That's what, what I wanted to do. What copy pasta is that? Oh. Uh, hold on. I like the one with Bayonetta where she goes, Spit it the fuck out. I don't yeah. know if I've heard this one. It feels... Oh. There we go. That's it. Oh, yeah, I think I remember seeing that copy pasta. But I fucked up. Class. I heard from Shannon. This is about me. This is about me go with you to the school f cultural festival. This is about right, me go, you go. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me read it. Okay, this is about. Just, just take a minute. Read I, the line I, of dialogue. I, I, and I, go. I, I, I know what it says. Do you? This is about having me go with you to the school cultural festival, right, milady? Shannon, I mean, uh, uh, you, yeah, 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 that, that's, that's right, but, um, uh, uh do, do you have any plans that day? I was strictly ordered by Shannon to work especially, uh, especially for you on that day, milady. I have never been to high school, so I don't really understand. But I hear it's a place where girls can be ashamed if they don't have a boy with them. I was given special orders to see to it that the daughter of the Yashirimiya family is in no way inferior to the common people. Their words, not mine. <laughs> Shannon, I'll beat you to death later! <laughs> This guy kept yelling with a strange voice and a broken smile, like a tea kettle filled with boiling water. As Cannon watched this, he sighed again. Cannon wasn't an idiot, either. He fully understood what Jessica intended by inviting him. But to be honest, playing along with Jessica's love game seemed like it'd be nothing more than an annoyance to him. However, Shannon had asked him over and over. He was deeply indebted to her, so he couldn't refuse. And that brooch was in his pocket. Could this strange turn of events have been brought about by the magic power residing in this brooch? Ridiculous. Do you remember what Shannon had said to him that day? What did Shannon see that I cannot? Wait, shouldn't I have read yeah, that? go ahead. Sorry. I don't understand Shannon's feelings. We are furniture. As if we could ever become anything more. It was a okay, truly odd exchange between Jessica, who was still rambling on in a strange voice, and Cannon, who, who sighed deeply. Jesse, someone's here. Didn't you hear? Huh? Uh, uh sorry. B who is it? As my friends all gathered together, they were looking this way with hard-to-describe expressions. Whispering to each other in small voices that weren't small anymore. My attempt to play dumb felt pretty transparent, even to me. Ugh. 
Did I really just say, sorry, who is it? Like, I don't know who just showed up. Oh, it's useless. Useless. My mind's going blank. There he is! <laughs> What the fuck? Kino, 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 It looks like a straight jacket. Fit check, fit check. Trip the fuck out, look at him! Like, I guess that's supposed to be a trench coat, but it looks like a straight jacket. It's like a Final Fantasy outfit. It looks like a fucking... Yo, my boy be walking it. It looks like Versus 13 Noctis. Yo, that's like Vincent. My boy has acquired the the fucking. I love the original version of this. I, I love the original version of this sprite the fucking most. Oh, the fucking. His his mouth is fucking buried in the in the collar. Like, look at this man. Look at him. Oh my god, Jesus Christ. He does look um, like a mouth. I like wait, 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 wait. Cannon said, "Drip or drown, bitch." Oh my god. <laughs> I, I can't see it as anything other than a straight jacket. <laughs> it looks like he's he looks a... better than his regular clothes. You just mouse. Oh my god, is that <laughs> just his boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> he's so like cute. Up inside. Wait, he's real? No way, seriously. Jessica, you traitor. He's incredible! He's younger? He's younger? Oh, sorry. I never heard he was younger. Where, where? Where, where's, where's Jesse's boyfriend? She's really into little kids. I love the, oh. gun oh. the gunshot oh. sound effect. Holy I don't want shit. Shotokan, Jessica. Uh. Don't you mean Shotokan? <laughs> That's what I said. More like Jessica. Oh, I thought you said Lollicon. No, Shotokan. Uh, no, also, okay. Cannon did get I'm rid in. of his yee ass hair. Oh, uh, Cannon <laughs> hat. Hey! <laughs> uh, aren't you late? <laughs> I didn't know where the entrance was. I must apologize for my tardiness. Right! Um, that outfit looks really good on you. <laughs> Shannon said normal clothes wouldn't do, so we went and bought this the other day. Does it look strange on me? <laughs> That's not true. Uh, Shannon, when I get back, I'll promote you to levels. <laughs> it feels like everyone here is a girl. It's uncomfortable. Cannon be like, with them. <laughs> is this a girl-only school? Oh no, those guys. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> C come on, let's study right here. Let's go to the stage, okay? Because I'll be up pretty soon. Just go, 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 go! Jessica seemed just as uncomfortable. Like being bathed in everyone's in interested gazes was hard on her. And after Jessica's appearance, Cannon thought he might have made things difficult for her by, by coming. I get the feeling I'm getting in the way. Am I being a burden? I, I told you! No way! Please tell me at any time if you- if I start getting in the way. Uh, yeah, no way he calls himself Boku! <laughs> There's no way you'd get in the way, Kanan Kun! <laughs> Yeah, she calls her boyfriend Kun. What would you like me to do, my lady? Oh shit! Oh my god, she makes him call him my lady like a butler or a neckbeard. <laughs> oh god damn it! <laughs> <laughs> what a no! You can't call me my lady today. Just trust me, don't. Is that so? Need to wear a fedora if you want to do that. <laughs> I have to say it because it's my job. As you wish, Jessica Summer. That's even worse. Kill. Yeah, trained in the color, Sama. Trained. Sorry, Cannon Gun. Could you close your eyes for just three seconds? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I guess I guess she's gonna kiss him. Well, you ladies can shut the fuck up or get the fuck out. Uh, as you wish. The fuck? By the time Cannon opened his eyes, a horrible tragedy had occurred in the room. Rest in fucking pieces. Everyone had been driven into the walls with their <laughs> arms and legs outstretched. This cat slipped her brass knuckles back into her pocket before Cannon's eyes had the opened. Fuck? Oh man, Cannon missed the Sakuga. Oh no, no, no! <laughs> so, uh, uh she is, in the, is in the fighting game and she does in fact use brass knuckles. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Everyone let's go over to the stage. <laughs> really? yeah. Everybody laying on the ground. <laughs> Our turn's coming up soon, so take a seat and wait for a bit. Maybe get some refreshments or some popcorn, because we've got to get ready. <laughs> Uh, go straight to the end here and you'll see a temporary stage. You'll know where to go. Please wait there. Don't mack on any ladies in the hallway. What? She pushed Cannon's back and he seemed to have, have trouble moving himself and... He seemed to have trouble moving himself and chased him out. Who's Mac? Uh, that little dude from fucking Smash Brothers? Hey, Even, though Cannon was confused... from <laughs> Even though Cannon was confused by Jessica's attitude and her panicky state, which he'd never seen before, he followed her instructions and headed back into the direction that she'd indicated. After seeing him off with an awkward smile, Jessica slammed the door shut and yelled loudly. There you go! You saw! Right? You saw that! Are you happy now? <laughs> Sucks for you, bitches! Ugh, I lost the bet. Yeah, so pay the fuck up! Well, this is sure Jesse didn't have a boyfriend, damn! Are you sure that was her boyfriend? I bet she's just abusing one of her servants, right? <laughs> Jesse's boyfriend's incredible. Shut up! Come on, let's get ready. She took the bracket, the brass knuckles out of her pocket again. Everyone energetically returned to their tasks. She keep these things out more often. White Shadow. Huh? Cannon went down the corridor Jessica had shown him and ran into a temporary stage set up where, where the vending machine should have been. Probably been being rented by the hour by some group or club. The ones singing were student groups, but the crowd was still incredibly excited. Okay, I just had a hallucination. I can't believe it, but for a split second, I saw, like, the the guy from Five Nights at Freddy's have a drum set. I swear to god. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. I swear to god. You're yeah, a hallucination. It's not real, but my brain just added him there. You don't exist. Okay. This is the start yeah, of a great creepypasta. Okay, let's do Fucking it. weird. And he had hyper-realistic eyes, and he was bleeding hyper-realistic blood, and then he shit. Wake up, Chelly! Wake up, Chelly! Wake up, Chelly! You need to wake up! One more fucking time, I'm gonna fucking bring up the hunger start being Sonic.exe and this fucking thing! Should I break... Wide awake, You have to learn to let go of Friday... of Five Nights at Freddy guy. Friday Night Funkin'. The accident was a long time ago. Friday Night Funkin'. We canceled that guy, don't you remember? He leaned against the wall in the darkness by himself. Stop! We are continuing! Let's go! So this is what they call high school. Yeah, this, this is, is you. me. <laughs> so this is what they call high school. Sure is noisy. This is what they call Sonic High School. That's what Cannon <laughs> thought. Why does it switch perspective mid sentence? And that's what Cannon thought. Then he remembered Jessica just now, acting in a way that he'd never seen before. Honestly, she was in such high spirits that the alcohol might have been involved. Him remaining composed and intellectual at all times was the highest virtue. In sense, it was very hard for Cannon to get used to the atmosphere of a school's cultural festival. He had responsibilities to report everything he saw and heard to the master. So he also had to report about how Jessica had acted without restraint earlier. At the very least, it was not fitting for the daughter of the assured that Amy had family. The master. This is probably me. <laughs> okay. The master Krasama. And especially Natsui-sama would, would probably be angry. If I am to report it in a way that protects my lady, should I blame it on inappropriate school friends? What was all that? 
so stupid. Like those fucking fireworks. Fucking really? Well, that is loud. It, it's the really? It's July 5th, you fuck! It's the 5th! Why are people still shooting fireworks? Man, people are trying to go to bed! If you're shooting fireworks at 10 p.m. on July 5th, I'll be shooting you. <laughs> and the rest of your loved ones. Someone in my neighborhood just shot off a fucking Roman candle! Of course! Ah. Oh. It's the fifth! At least I wasn't course. a Roman cancel. Damn. Huh. Why the fuck are people throwing up fireworks here? It's fucking Canada! <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, back to the visual it's novels. It's for really late stopped. Canada today. Visual novels. Meanwhile, back in the joke we started. Cannon thought minutes. back on how Jessica had acted earlier and sighed again. <sighs> you understand not to his headache a little bit now. Come to think of it. Natsuhi Sama, as the president of the PTA, was supposed to go to an informal gathering after attending the ceremony in the gymnasium. She said she wouldn't be able to see Milady's performance, didn't she? That's probably for the best. Cowards certainly are. Crowds. Crowds, Crowds certainly are unpleasant. What in the world is going on? Crowds is certainly unpleasant. Several female students were keep glancing at me. It seems they're all whispering the same thing Milady's school friends said. And surely it's unpleasant. Come to think of it, didn't Shannon warn me? If you walk alone at something like a school festival, you'd better watch out, because lots of strange people will come and talk to you. Excuse me, are you by yourself? Just ex as expected, a group of girls I'd never met started talking to me. Their stares stated the oh, <clears throat> their stares stated to make my started to make my back tingle. I don't know why it's keeps it stated. Didn't she tell me some magic words that could f chase them off in times like this? Um, fuck off. Sorry. I'm with someone. Uh, oh, really? I'm sorry. Ah, it worked. Instant reaction. Well, that got rid of them, but it hasn't really changed the number of people staring at me. Uh, B, you're up. Hello? Sorry. That's fine. <laughs> no, it's that... I can't read, fuck. <laughs> no, it's that kid's Jesse boyfriend. No way. It's that kid? Nigga, fuck! What? <laughs> Khan, are you what? okay? Are you, did you die? What the hell? You okay, Khan? Did you just look at the gif I posted and freak out? I look over to my fucking right on my screen. And I see young Mary McBitch face over here. It's not that bad. I've seen worse. Hey, Doesn't hey. she have like really large boobs? <laughs> That's a yandere. Why you say, is that Joshi? your first concern, Joshi? <laughs> well, because Why I think I've seen that character before. Oh, I bet Fuck you have. You! Fireworks! I need a moment. <laughs> what? Like it's from the uh, gif I posted? I'm going fair. I've seen that character guys, before. Guys, we're so <laughs> close to a really funny scene. Please keep going. Okay, let's go. Let's keep I can't, on going. I, think I you can't believe I'm sure he was fake. Isn't he cute? He's so so he's younger. Lucky Jesse. Oh god, I'm breaking up in a cold sweat. Huh. There's no way I'll ever come to a place like this again. Can inside for about the zillionth time today. When he did, the lighting changed and the standing audience started cheering. I looked around and realized that there was sudden, suddenly a large group of people there. And like earlier, they were mostly guys. With this huge crowd, he couldn't even see the stage. Fortunately, there was a fallen beer ca case nearby, so he tried using that as a footstool. 
And he did he realize that there was now a, a new group on stage. Are you British? Oh god, she's British! Oh, British! What the fuck is the British so version? into my theory, you fucks! Uh, we have to see the what British the version, fuck? don't we? We do. Uh, Wait, the British version? Uh, oh, okay, so here, This is not the canon one. So here, um, we're gonna watch this version, and then I will- and then after, after the next- after it is done, I will show you the true, the real version. The real. The true and honest There's a version. real version? There's a real yes. version. Yes. There's the the real version. version. Wait up. The yeah. better version. Is it real? And then after that. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Well, we can explain more later. Just please, just keep, just go. Let's just go. go. Joshi, go. Their, their leader is Milady. She's changed into stage clothes, and she's even holding a guitar. These clothes are awful. I didn't know she could play. Then again, maybe she can play. I've seen her practicing air guitar before. <laughs> I love the fucking. I love that Cannon is watching. She was by playing Guitar Hero. Fucking and she, she, Jessica, unaware of her surroundings, is being watched by Cannon just for just air guitar. Oh my god. <clears throat> so Matsui that's not to be the. Oh, go ahead. Matsui Sama wouldn't, wouldn't approve of any hobbies outside of study. Maybe she was always practicing in secret. Come to think of it. She's been returning really late from school recently, hasn't she? Maybe she's been practicing at school, far away from Natsui-sama's prying eyes. It really is for the best that Natsui-sama didn't come. If Milady were to get scolded by Natsui after putting, on so putting in so many hours of practice, she'd probably be dejected. Oh, this is everybody, so just fucking- There's guys and girls in the crowd, so just go nuts. Everybody! Jesse Summer! 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 Okay, Jesse Summer! Jesse Summer! Jesse I have my reason- Everyone! Thanks for gathering here today! I could hear Jess Jessica Summer's forceful voice through the speakers. Jesse Summer? Maybe that's her nickname at school. The students in the audience kept calling out that name. I'm a little offended by that crew name. It's inappropriate for Malik. <laughs> Fucking cannon, come on, dude. <laughs> Jessica Sama was in high spirits as they kept shouting Jesse Sama. Everyone here was probably a fan. Her mic performance picked up on that and electrified them even more. It was almost like a music program on TV. At first, oh. At first, he thought it was all silly. That feeling had changed to appreciation. It was incredible in its own way. Ken never listened to music of his own free will, but he'd often heard this kind of music the Asheri Mia family liked. Since it was almost all classical, Ken had naturally taken a liking to that kind of music. So to, so to Ken, the song Jessica sang was, uh, how should you say it? Extremely colorful. In any case, if Natsuhi-sama heard it, she'd probably crumble into dust. <laughs> oh. Boo! Not canon! <laughs> Alright, just let it, let it see. The song is good, though. That was a dope song. She wearing... But everyone looks like they're having a really good time. You wearing a gar belt under that dress? Some diehard fans would even brought pen lights, sang along and danced crazily with the same with the same movements, almost though like they had, it had been planned ahead. On the stage, on the, on the stage, Jessica Sama had also sang enthusiastically, dripping with sweat. You couldn't find a single element that was appropriate for a daughter of the Asheramia family. It looked like so much fun. Everybody. Jesse Summer! Jesse Summer! Jesse! 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 So here, this is so, the lyrics to Suipetan. So like since, uh, since the lyrics uh, stopped and there's no audio playing right now, I'm going to quickly, despite the inherent risk of somehow a, to a, to a Toho song from like 20 years ago uh, getting copyright claimed in the United States of America, 
Uh, I'm going to play the actual version of this scene now. <laughs> for you, oh, yeah. for, for you, the viewer at home, don't worry. I'm about to set it up. I'm just. I hope we don't get shit canned. We'll be fine. Everything. We'll be fine. Be it's a Toho song. It's a fucking Toho song. Uh, uh, so yeah. Wait, we'll did say you really actually, actually reference Toho. Yeah, he's uh, a big Toho. He's oh, yeah. a big Toho. Fan. He actually fucking loves Toho. Holy shit. Also, I would like to say, even though we don't. Oh, uh, oh, don't wait, give it a second. Over. All right. Okay. All right, we are watching the true shit. Oh, the Umineko anime, though, I would like to appreciate uh, Dokyun Heart as a mm. true fucking banger. Oh, yeah. The, 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 but the, they just play like a different Toho song, don't they? Because she's still wearing the getup in the anime version. It's her character song, but they but, still have the Toho okay. fit. So here's, we are the, now playing it. here's the original version of the song. This ought to be good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fuck with their outfit. It's a Toho, Toho character it's outfit. It's a Toho character. It's Marissa. Oh, there's Rena. And it's doing that thing that, uh... That that Japanese Japanese yeah. That's the that's the background. Yeah. They literally have a person there. Yeah, there's literally just a person playing. I think so um, also just... fun fact, that is in fact Jessica cool Super in the fighting game as well. It sounds like she's a little kid singing into a screech mic while holding a devil tail. I mean, like, I, what's honestly, no. so like the, I think the funniest thing about it is that like uh, in the initial version that had Jessica in it of the fighting game, um, they changed it to uh, uh they something like this. Yeah, so like they changed it, the original version of the fighting game where Jessica appeared. It was like the second iteration of the fighting game release. Uh, they had her in in the British outfit, and then they went back in the, the most recent version of the game, and they put her back in the Toho outfit. <laughs> uh, the, oh. the most recent version available in America. Yeah. The Western. Oh, yeah. Cool. The one with the rollback, right? Yeah. Well, the, the, the better one. version. Also, oh, is that, is like the icon on the heart chest piece supposed to be like the Japan meatball from the flag? I don't know. Fucking. They, they, we call her British, <laughs> and so does a mod yeah. install that allows you to choose between the yeah. Toho and British. Anyways, uh, Khan, you have a thing you have to sing. I utterly refuse. What? Why? <laughs> Again today, behind me, the sound of footsteps. Oyashiro Sama oh, stalking, stalking you. You don't want to sing about Oyashiro Sama? Sacrifices, torture. Sacrifices, torture. <laughs> Onikakushi, does that make a good snack? Don't say Marisa. Oh, is, oh that's what... <laughs> Harm is that? Come on. Oh, because uh, it's like, oh, hey, that's not the thing that she's wearing. Wait, who's Marisa? Marisa I'm gonna guess, the, uh... The that she's actually supposed to be looking like. I'm gonna guess this is me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think, okay? Especially not into my mind. Yeah, that's fair. I know a lot of people who can't say. I must not go along with it, but... I mean, you're a good singer, Con. At any rate, Milady is full of life and looks like she's having a great time. As I watched Milady enjoying herself, I thought... Could this be Yoshirimiya Jessica's true nature? Don't I know better than anyone? That during her life on Rokenjima, she's had no choice but to kill her sense of self? So the time she spends, not as Milady, successor to the Yoshirimiya family, but as a single girl called Jessica, Living a life to the fullest must be very important to her. I've worked, I've worked close to Milady, seeing her in all seasons, and thought I knew everything about her. But that was all limited to one side of her, the Milady of Rukenjima. We are furniture. We serve on Rokenjima, and end our lives on Rokenjima. So I've come to think of Rokenjima itself as the, our whole world. As though, like in... <laughs> Fuck me! Ptolemaic. Say it again. Ptolemaic. 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 Ptolemaic theory. 
The ocean spilled off the end of the world into the abyss. Flat Earth. But when I look at Milady like this, I can see how horribly narrow that outlook is. I still can't go along with the excitement of the crowd. But I feel like I can see something that cannot be seen on Lokenjima. I'm not sure if this is the unseeable thing Shannon was talking about. But the ocean still doesn't look blue to me. Legendary scene. Wasn't the cultural festival at Jessica's school today? How's the principal doing? He seemed to be in good health. That's right, Diet Member Takamiya was also there. He said to give you his regards. Hmm, busy as usual. It appeared so. That person is also very energetic. Energetic. Oh, and I believe President Imoto also made an appearance. Naturally, the topic of Jessica's cultural festival came up at dinner. Dinner? Well, events often became social gatherings for local volunteers. Same for the Asherania family, who were celebra celebrities around here. Naturally, remembering the, remember the names of the one VIP after another at that social gathering, telling Kraus the news about them. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <clears throat> Milady, perhaps you ought to take care more care with your manner. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Jessica, how many times must I tell you to watch your language? Yes, ma'am. Jessica answered, discouraged. When he saw this, Kraus smiled a little and paused his conversation with Natsuhi. How was the festival for you, Jessica? Huh? Uh, well, it was okay. Huh. I was watching. You did an excellent job. Uh, huh? <laughs> well, uh, uh. Jessica's face turned bright red. Probably hadn't imagined that Natsuhi would actually come see her on stage. Well, the mix of happiness and embarrassment. Actually, she hadn't really wanted her mother to watch, since she didn't want to be told that her music was inappropriate for the Ashuramiya family. But it certainly didn't make her unhappy to hear her parents say that she's done, done a good job after watching her try her best. Jessica acted with both composure and dignity. Fitting behavior for the student's representative. Ah, uh, uh, oh, yeah. The smile that had been there until just a second ago crumbled like sand. Jessica immediately realized that her mom was talking about something different. Jessica was also the, 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 school's, the school student's president. She had no int interest in doing something so annoying, but her parents had been pushy, so she grudgingly accepted. Unfortunately, she was popular at school, so she won the election, the election easily. So Natsuhi was praising her for the student council sponsorship ceremony at the beginning of the cultural festival. Actually, she had just carried that out half-heartedly. After that, she immediately met up with her friends and held a stage rehearsal for the rest of the time. That experience of standing above people and bearing responsibility will surely prove useful in the future. I'm sure it will help Jessica mature as a member of the Ushiramiya family. But you rushed to the level while giving the greeting. You get a pass on content, but the fast pace of your speech lessened the impact. 
It might help if you get developed a habit of pausing every once in a while. Yeah. Don't worry, Jessica, I appreciate your strumming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's eating. pretty good. Jessica didn't feel like going straight to her room. It was basically the place her parents had ordered her to be. So perhaps for Jessica, instead of returning to her own room, being in an unknown unlo location in this large mansion was a meager form of resistance. Wow, wow, wow. Jessica felt that, the, that even being in this mansion made it hard to breathe. She went, so she went outside to the Rose Garden. Well, even if she did show up, I'm sure she would have said something about how it wasn't appropriate for a successor of the Ashirmia family. Something about, this, something about that whole thing actually kind of fucks me up, because that sort of just means that she took a boat over to her school for the sole purpose of watching that speech and then leaving immediately. Hey, she's got places to be. She, she, she wanted to be there for her daughter. You know? What does Nazi even do? <laughs> she she does stuff. I say she only PTA does certain members, stuff. Man. PTA no, she members. kinda just like yells at like fucking Also, servants. you gotta admit, this is fucked up. This is going in my notes. Okay. Everything goes in your notes, Con. Jesus. <laughs> Everything. I am honestly... No, but surprised with how good your attention to detail is. It's amazing. Also, Josh, I better see an edit of um, Hideyoshi with the guitar in the VOD. Uh, <laughs> it's not gonna be in the VOD. The oh, 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 edited VOD. You know I mean. If you need a guitar, I can draw one in. Anyway. I already said the line. Yeah, that was shite. Yeah. So isn't it better this way? In the end. <laughs> Jessica laughed at what she was sulking over. She laughed at what kind of words she could possibly have been expecting. That was that was that was dumb of me. In the end, it was just acting like an entitled brat. I'm a little exasperated with myself, and it makes me want to laugh. <sighs> Milady. Uh, gun. Don't scare me like that. <laughs> Seriously, don't. <coughs> As she was about to force a laugh, Cannon suddenly started talking to her and she choked. Uh, what's up? Got something to say? Um, yeah? Jessica's, Jessica's expression became the one she always wore when looking at Cannon. Disgust. <laughs> the listless Jessica from a second ago was gone. If he had uh, still only known Jessica as an eventual successor to the Ishermia family, as he had until yesterday, he might have mistakenly thought that Jessica's mood had sprung back to normal. But that wasn't quite right. He now knew a part of her that he couldn't have seen until yesterday. He understood that there was no way Jessica actually felt the way that she appeared. Oh, about today's cultural festival. Well, thanks for coming with me so I could show off. You saved my butt out there. <laughs> that song. You were really good. <laughs> uh, really? I am embarrassed. Even though she had heard the words that she most wanted to hear, Jessica acted shyly and couldn't accept them openly. I cannot sing. And I don't know how to play an instrument either. Other than the harmonica and the recorder. Hey, I, I did actually try to learn those, which I learned in elementary school. 
The pieces are coming together, Joshy. God damn it! <laughs> well, damn it, you're becoming more like him every day. Kurt. I did it before you even knew Umineko was a thing! You, oh yeah, I forgot, you actually were trying to learn harmonica. <laughs> Everything led to this moment. You were bred for canon. <laughs> unfortunately, you're becoming kidding to him. Oh no, he's kidding. No! By that uh, logic, doesn't that mean that Orange is also slowly becoming Kinzo? Wait, why would we be- <laughs> Wait a minute, my fucking wait, icon is wait, Battler! Wait, is there, why, would, why would Orange we jump to Kinzo? Why would Orange practicing black magic to bring about some thought from the afterlife? I mean, like, you often say you're going feral. Yeah, but I'm not going- I'm not going mad. And you mad. do think for Beatrice. Trick your oh absinthe, God. Orange yeah. says, calm vibrations. Beatrice. I don't! I mean, it's funny because it's like, oh, Orange Simps for Beatrice. And like, fucking Zaz over here, the guy who literally had his profile picture is Beatrice, and fucking is named Beto uh, Beto Life Guy, and another server fucking is rarely called it. <laughs> what is happening tonight, aren't we? Anyways. Anyways. Witness. So I simply assumed you were the it's same lady. Hard, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, Shelly? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't really go. Yeah, you're fine, you're fine. You're right. I already said the line. Okay. At the time, Ken never felt as though he'd been looking down on Jessica this way. But not all the people he'd seen playing special instruments were on the other side of the brawn tubes in the TV. At the very least, he'd been under the impression that it'd be impossible for Jessica. I am furniture, so I don't believe there was any need to sing or play an instrument. But I'm not sure anymore. Seriously, Kenokun? <sighs> Enough with that I am furniture business. That's like a proper attitude you servants are supposed to have, right? Servants are supposed to be like living furniture. Genji san says it a lot, and it's kind of creepy, not gonna lie. It isn't just a proper attitude. Because we really are furniture. Ugh. I know the kids from the Fukuin house receive assistance from grandfather in various ways. And I realize how grateful you are for that. I do. But it's a bit cruel for you to have to call yourself furniture just because of that. We're all human, aren't we? Hmm. Inukun, when you saw me sing, you're right there. What did you think? It looked like you were having a lot of fun. I don't think that's true. Huh? You didn't just think it looked fun. You were envious, weren't you? That's not... Cannon probably didn't notice that emotion himself. Most likely, Cannon saw something he'd never seen before, learned about it for the first time, and felt envious. And to trick himself out of that emotion, he called himself furniture over and over. I know I'm a successor to the Ashirimi of family, or whatever. And, well, I'm sure there'll be a lot of annoying stuff to do from now on. As far as that goes, I can't do anything but give up since I was born under an unlucky star. Probably, just like you had to live at the Fukuin house, I don't have a choice either. I couldn't choose the stars under which I was born. That may be true. Hell yeah, it's true. But there's one place where you and I are completely different. You know what that is? I am furniture, and Milady is not. He was about to say that, but stopped. I do not know. Anakun, you decided that your fate determines everything about you, and you gave up. But I can't accept this kind of fate, 
so I do the best I can. So while there's still the rigid and cornered me that's got to stay as the daughter of the Ashira Mia family, I've created another me that can do what I like to the fullest. Another you? A persona. What? Yeah. Kanakun, you've been instructed to say because I am furniture. Oh god, what are you doing with that gun, Jessica? No! <laughs> I'm sure you've gone through a lot of tough times just because of that. I think that's... really unfortunate. But the idea that your entire life will be decided by that alone just seems sad to me. You know, it's always possible for people to create another self inside them. A self that they can truly grow to like. I'm not talking about escaping from reality, okay? None of that BS. When I'm that other self, I can really feel like I'm living a great life. So no matter how constrained and boring everyday life gets to be, I can always live on without suffocating. To make another self inside of yourself that you can tr truly grow to like. To make another me, one that isn't furniture. During her oh. relationship with George Sama, has Ken has Shannon given birth to another self that isn't furniture? Oh, that's you, fuck. Oh fuck, oh well. And did this other Shannon see something that cannot be seen by furniture? That's right. Well, I don't know anything about your private life, Kenna Kun. <laughs> but I can sort of guess. Your private life probably doesn't exist at all. Am I right? Cannon couldn't reply, but that answer was enough. He had no concept of a private life. So Cannon would always be Cannon. So furniture would always be furniture. Canon Kun? Canon isn't your real name, right? In the Fukuin house, new graduates will be given a f new family. N uh, given new family isn't a new life. They were also given a new name. In this case, that was Canon. Certainly. This name of mine may be a temporary thing. he had thought of himself as canon and no one else. But he remembered. There definitely had been another self that wasn't canon. But that was far, far away, beyond the distant fog of oblivion. So even for you, it should be okay at times where you're canon-kun and times when you aren't. Maybe when you act as a servant, that canon-kun calls himself furniture and strictly limits his own will like a total pleep. But when you aren't canon kun, I think it's okay to live much, much more freely. Was it me? Those words definitely weren't just lip service. This girl's been like this, like this in the past. She had cursed her own birth into an environment different from all of her friends at school. Only she had been in a, in a heavily constricted environment, forced to learn all sorts of things. And she had been told to, to uh, whom she was and who wasn't allowed to be with, play with, fuck. It may, have, it may have been said, but she'd given up, resigning herself to the fact that she'd been born under that kind of star. But one day, Jessica stopped giving up on and surrendering. Felt like an Ashirimiya family customs and pressure didn't matter. She created a real Jessica inside of herself. One who could do what she really wanted to do. You know... 
I go by the nickname Jesse at school. When I'm Jesse, I live life honestly and to the fullest. And because of that, I can do my best when I'm Jessica too. Would it really be so bad if you could also have times when you're canon and times when you're, um, your real name? When you are canon, can't you try becoming another self that you like? At times when I'm not canon. He once thought of his real name as being completely meaningless. Because of that, he thought that canon summed up everything about him. And now Jessica was telling him to create something new. Another self that wasn't canon. Canon could. If you don't mind, tell me. What's your real name? He was silent for quite some time. Maybe Cannon's real name hasn't had risen to the top of his tongue. Tip of his tongue. After hesitating for a long time over whether he should say it, in the end, he swallowed it back down. Oh come on! <laughs> My real name is Joshi. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I the forgot. circle has been complete. My real name is Makoto Naegi. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> My name doesn't matter anymore. Those words could see the faint rejection. No matter what, what kind of that. real name I had. The only truth now is that here, I am canon. The past has nothing to do with anything. The materials with which furniture is made, be it a trunk of a tree or otherwise, are meaningless in the end. I told you to stop that! You aren't furniture, you're human! Right? Right? I am not human. Cannon clearly voiced his refusal. With a rage he normally didn't show. Jessica couldn't say anything back and was struck silent. You are human, milady. So you are free to live any way you please. And any kind of future is possible for you. It's almost like you have wings and can dance through the sky like a bird. But I am not like that. Even if I looked like a bird, I'd be nothing more than a domestic duck. Even though they have wings, they cannot fly. Wait, what? Oh, wait, ducks can fly, don't they? I'm having yeah. a moment here, guys! I said the line. <laughs> to speak of that dream, a flight, despite that, it's just too cruel. Furniture and ducks! What the hell is all this? <sighs> no. Jessica had unconsciously gone along with Cannon's forceful manner of speaking. It was that she shouldn't fire back and swallowed her words. I don't know anything about you. I don't even know your upbringing and I don't know the hardships you've been through. So I can't even imagine why you started calling yourself furniture. But I know this. You aren't furniture. Or a duck. Okay? You're a real human. Mm. If you want to say Cannon Kun's furniture when he's working as a servant, that's fine. But in that case, don't you think you can create a self for when you aren't furniture? For when you're human? Only a human like you, milady, can embrace that possibility. 
I am not like that. I have no future, no possibilities, no dream that I am allowed to see. So, milady, please don't say any more cruel things. Why? Why do you say stuff like that? Because it seems you mistakenly think I'm human. The same as you, milady. We are different sorts of beings. I just wanted to make that clear. I heard from Shannon. Something about Milady liking me. Uh, what? <laughs> uh, no! <laughs> uh. I look almost identical to a human. So, like Shannon, I could probably delude myself into thinking I am human, and pretend to love for time. But then, I would surely be fooling myself. No, I would be fooling you too, milady. Shannon and George Sama will definitely fall apart. Hmm. Even though Shannon herself probably realizes that day will come, she's taking part in such stupid... There's nothing stupid about it! Sure, George Nissan's a wonderful person, and he's gotta match up to his parents' expectations. But... I'm sure when it comes to arranged marriage, John, Abel will interfere in various ways, and um, I think their future prospects look like they'll be full of trouble, okay? What, you want to spell any of it further for you? But you know what? George Nissan isn't the kind of guy who'll surrender to that shit! Shannon's no Juliet, and he'll definitely bring her happiness. People cannot engage in romance with the furniture. Oh my god, that's the Live best our line we've, we've read all night. <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is that even if you could love furniture, you cannot love I cannot love you, milady. <sighs> Those words of cannons crushed all of Jessica's bittersweet feelings from that day. There was no way her emotions could have predicted that she'd be refused so bluntly. In an instant, she lost the willpower that had led her to try and unravel something s stubborn in Cannon's heart. Before she knew it, she was just standing there in shock. Milady, if your feelings for me were due to my conceit, then I must ask that you forgive me. No. Well, I won't deny that. Thank you very much. Huh? Thank you very much for thinking of me as human. Those feelings alone really do make me happy. Anything more would be too cruel for me, so... No, I've said enough. Really. Um, sorry about that. Just correctly scratched at her head and spoke, and I forced her voice to sound bright. I just kinda... ran on ahead by myself, and was a burden on you. I'm honestly sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry using up your whole day off. <laughs> no. I was also happy that I could see you having fun. Then, let's call it a night. If I don't go back to my room and turn off the lights, Mom will get mad at me again. <laughs> uh, 
that's probably for the best. I wish you good night, milady. Yeah. <sighs> good night. Cannon saw Jessica trot away with her back to him, looking disheartened. Then she suddenly broke into a reckless dash and disappeared in the direction of the mansion. As he watched her back, for just an instant, Cannon was tormented by the feeling that he'd just made a huge mistake. But he hadn't made a mistake at all. And forced to refuse her now for her sake, the pain was still at its smallest. Con, oh, I think you. <laughs> I think Sorry. you have a nice. feeling. Nice going! Making a woman cry like that. <laughs> I didn't expect you to refuse her that strongly. If you'd have given a normal answer, another pair of lovers would have been born thanks to my magic. How long have you been there? Oh, long enough. What a horrible person. I feel like that should be reflected back at you, darling. When he turned around, the witch was suddenly there. It looked like she'd been there the whole time, watching the two of them as though enjoying a play. I shall forgive you for your insults just this once, interference to that amusing little show. Even after a thousand years, no much more interesting show exists than complications between boys and girls. <laughs> the finest of cake. To me, it's a pleasure that's better and more addictive than opium. Hmm? Cannon pulled the butterfly brooch out of his pocket. It was the manifestation of the great magic the witch had bestowed. With a hesitation, Cannon slammed it against the ground and stomped on it. Oh? What is the meaning of this? You know that was given by me. Just now I figured it out. What you're doing isn't as tasteful as being a cupid of love. You're just a demon who enjoys showing love to those who can never be together, deceiving them. You are free to think that. Most humans I lend my power to say the same thing. Don't play dumb. You didn't lend Shannon your power because you felt sorry for her. You found a weak point in Shannon's heart as her chest burned with love, and you made her break the mirror that sealed you. What's more, you guessed how this would all end. And now you're toying with her! Huh. Am I wrong? <laughs> Furniture has a thoroughly pitiful existence, doesn't it? So, you have no dreams, no future, and even no love? How sad. But still, good, good. There is nothing better than knowing your place. <laughs> nah. As you noticed, there was a faint love residing in Jessica's heart. You seem to think you've snipped it in the bud. But did you know? Trees grow thicker branches if you thin out and prune them. A girl who loves furniture, is it? Amusing, how truly amusing! <laughs> Shannon and George will also eventually reach a stalemate with their unfulfillable love, ripening into the sort of large fruit I love. Ah, oh, so tasty. However, regretfully, it seems to be going so smoothly for those two that it's hardly entertaining anymore. But on the plus side, it seems the two of you will amuse me to no end. <laughs> The witch laughed. Even though she had known the two could never be together, she had lent magic to bring them together. 
However, they couldn't escape the fate that prevented them from being ever being truly joined. The witch knew them. Even if they were joined, Shannon and George, Shannon and George, Ken and Jessica, would eventually break up. They would wander through an endless desert in the hell of love, tormented by an eternal thirst. What? Did you think I'd lend you my power and ask for nothing in exchange? I'll gladly assist a pair in love. And in exchange, I'll enjoy watching the cool fate they'll eventually meet. I have never come across a better show, not over the course of a thousand years. Just look at Ken, though. See how he ended up. An old, pitiful man who learned a taste of love before being thrown out of paradise. Look at how he lives, like a dead man that cannot fully die. <laughs> You truly are a witch. Thank you. Disappear! Get out of my sight, demon! <laughs> oh, I would disappear even without your prompting. My power still hasn't returned. And it's still tiring to continue showing myself. I overdid it when I gave you lovers my power. As I am now, it will not be easy to maintain that power without that brooch as a catalyst. Cannon ground his foot even more into the stomped brooch. He felt it break under his foot. Then it evaporated like water. Changing the butterflies of sparkled gold, fluttering out from beneath Cannon's foot. Maintaining this form is quite painful for me as well. I will hide myself for a time, just as you desire. My magical power will rise as surely as the moon and the tides. And eventually a fitting time will come for my revival. I know not in the slightest whether that will be tomorrow, next year, or even a hundred or a thousand years in the future. But as long as there are those who entertain me, I will surely gain power and revive. I will disappear for a short while. Until that time comes. The bruise on the palm of your hand is already gone. So if you wish, tomorrow morning you can let my existence vanish like an illusion or a dream. After all, nothing saddens me more than being forgotten. However, I will surely be revived. Be on your guard, so that you will not regret that day's coming when it arrives. I will surely have my second coming and rule over everything as this island's true master. That is the time when the door to the Golden Land will be opened again. The greedy dead will surely wake me. You talk too much. Disappear now, Golden Witch! <laughs> The witch became a cloud of gold butterflies and scattered away, leaving behind a scornful laugh. The whole area sparkled like a gold blizzard in a snow globe. It was a fleeting, fantastical scene that disappeared in a heartbeat. I'm having too much fun voicing Beatrice! The witch could no longer be seen. However, Cannon felt as, uh, like he could still hear that shrill, unpleasant laugh. Oh, it's, it's almost as bad as Goda's, but still not Goda's level. This is Beatrice again. Ah, how amusing. How truly amusing. 
Why is the human world still so amusing after all the years I've been away? Go mad with love, go mad with gold. Those who don't go mad are from one of the two who are not human. <laughs> I see. So that's why the word furniture is so fitting. <laughs> Furniture is created to serve humans. And I cruelly treat humans as playthings to satiate my bin's thousand years of boredom. What a truly amusing three-way deadlock that I can cannot control furniture. <laughs> Kinzo, you fool, what a truly entertaining scheme you've worked out. Furniture, you fools. Just you try and see if you can fell me. Tonight, two seeds of love have been sown. Including the one already sown that makes three. <laughs> Beatrice! Why did you leave me alone in this pitiful world? I hate you. I will hate you for all eternity. I've been trying to answer despite being yearned for, so... Moss, drinking any more will be damaging to your health. Shut up. Dr. Nanjo warned you as well, did he not? Be silent, Genji. Understand. Understand my grief and sadness. And I believe at least you, my oldest friend, would understand my pain. Why can you not understand? Oh, Beatrice! Why did you leave me all alone? Mm. Fuck my throat. <laughs> oh, uh. <laughs> what the hell do you mean, furniture? I don't get it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, Jelly. Jelly. Jelly on the stage. Uh, Jelly required on set? Give him a second. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? That uh, Jelly left. And yeah, now he's back. One, two, three. Hello? Hello? Yes, Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't working before. We're gonna do a full reset, sorry. Oh, poor Jessica-sama. Even though the cries I hear coming from your room tell me of the situation, there is nothing I can do. It's all a tragedy due to a pair too young, think too close when the positions of their birth are too distant. I can do nothing but understand the lady's feelings, hide my footsteps, and quietly walk away. What was that? <laughs> Fine. That was good. That was good. Yeah. What? Oh, we're still going? We're still going? What? We thought there would be a chapter break. I don't remember the scene. Wait, this what? is- is this new? No, it's not. I don't think this lasts very long, though. I- I, I remember this. this. I new. think I remember this, actually. Alright, yeah, go, oh. go, go ahead, I guess. John? John? One sec, taking notes. Alright. Uh, I will say, uh, uh, I'm glad you're having fun with Beatrice, but one thing I will recommend uh, extend your O's and your U's. Humans. Furniture. That kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Essentially a female Oishi? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> like, just... Right, enunciate. <laughs> yeah, enunciate. Put a lot of emphasis on, like, O's and U's and that kind of shit. Hmm. Furniture. Okay. Furniture. Honestly, I prefer the way Khan does it to that, but I guess that's not. Yeah, we can workshop it later. Yeah, I know. Uh. 
Um, what? Do you mean by that, George and Son? Issa, you needed on set. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was so used to me not being needed on set. Uh, How do you think I, I mean feel? When... <laughs> I mean what I said. I still haven't built up my castle. Once I manage to do that, I'll finally be able to think of myself as an adult. When that happens, I want to marry you. That's... Um... Uh... But... My heart, my heart won't let me do that anymore. So I want to give you an engagement ring. Engagement, you say? But, uh, um, I uh, am furniture. Alright, bad. Well then, furniture has to listen to what people have to say, right? Right now, I have a ring that will be fitting for you. For you. Oh. I think it'll be ready in the time for me to bring in an upcoming family conference. I'll give it to you then, so please. I want you to hear- I want- I want you to he let me hear your answer. If you accept, then I'll proclaim our engagement right there, in front of all the relatives, including Grandfather. I'm sure that people won't approve of our relationship. But there's no need to look at their faces. Because you only have you only have to fill your eyes with me. I'll definitely bring you happiness. That's the one thing I can promise you with certainty. I just can't wait to see how it will ripen. <laughs> oh, who's... Am I you, saying you, that? Yeah. Uh, okay. The gold butterflies do not swoop upon the juice of overripe and rushy fruits. I cannot wait for the day of harvest to come. Is it the time of the banquet here yet? <laughs> There we go. Yeah. And curtain. The first day, October 4th, 1986. Are we going to see Fatler? No, actually. Well, not yet. But we're not doing that right now. Oh. And that's it for today. Yeah. Oh, Next chapter is going to be a lot. lot. Yeah. Because I've got a lot of notes here. I bet you do, Con. Man, I, I had a, I had a session today, didn't I? You sure did, buddy. Yes, you did. And AC, so how's it? AC and Shelly got their five seconds. Oh. There go ahead, B. What's up? So how's everyone enjoying the episode? Good. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty invested. Good, man. Jessica, what do you mean you're for George? Oh, yeah, that. Yeah. I'm certain that, I'm certain that Beatrice has air conditioning, don't worry. <laughs> okay. uh. I, I didn't get lips. to say it earlier because it would have been a spoiler, but I, I think you can obviously tell this is the Shannon and Canon episode. Hmm. Yeah, that was pretty much a strict Canon episode. Ashi finally getting the screen time he deserves. So I will say right now, uh, for the people watching at home, this is technically the end of the episode, but we're going to be doing a brief uh, post-discussion where Khan and uh, everybody else... 
con. Theory crafting. Uh, we'll have a chance to kind of talk about you know their theories and the notes they've taken. Uh, I'll be I'm going to be dipping out for just a second, but don't worry. Uh, people, you're going to hear them talk for a little bit. Um, somebody, let me know if something happens in, in Fight Club. <laughs> All right. Um, no. Would you? I mean, like, I know because of uh, recent stuff, you need to get to bed a little bit earlier. If you need, I can record the post session stuff on my. I mean, well, me? Well, well right now, uh, uh, that's not. I don't have work until at least Thursday. I know he's I talking about up. me because I have a job that's going to be happening soon. Uh, oh yeah, right. New job. So congrats on the job, dude. Yeah, thank you. Um, that being said, uh, you know that's not starting until next week. But I mean, like, if you guys want to like start recording those, uh, once I can't really like stay up super late anymore, that'd be great. Granted, I'm working from home for the first couple of months, so I mean, I can st afford to stay up till like maybe like one at the most. <laughs> Meh. Yeah. All right, then let All me right. get some let me get some music on. Uh, I'm gonna mute I think myself we all a little just bit. Really need to go ahead and get back on a better sleep schedule. I'm getting vax tomorrow morning, so I'm gonna have to go. Second vax no. or first vax? Second half. Oh, all right. Get, make sure to keep some aspirin near you. Is it the Pfizer or is it the Moderna? Pfizer, I think. Oh, okay. I didn't take that Probably one. Probably 99 percent graphene. Don't worry, I gotta drink five hour energy right here with me. <laughs> Ew! Don't drink that. It's almost midnight. Oh, I down those constantly. Ew! I mean, so look, anyhow, the end, we should probably get to the post discussion. Yeah. So, all ribbing and everything aside, I actually wanted to go back to the start of the chapter. Mm -hmm. Jessica's oh. obviously. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Con, but I need to say something. Just in case, like someone from Twitch gets mad, the 99% graphene thing was a joke. I'm just gonna say that because I know some of these sites oh. get really twitchy yeah. about like. Vaccine misinformation or something. I don't. I don't even I don't know what that get is. Orange I don't trouble. even know what that is. I don't think they'll care. And if they do care, fuck them. I got nothing. Absolutely nothing. This uh, complete nonsense conspiracy theory going around that the Pfizer vaccine is just ninety nine percent graphene. It doesn't have like any vaccine shit in it. So of course that's bullshit. Uh, <laughs> right. So back. Uh, so uh, hey, uh, we're starting the post discussion right now. All right. Back at the very beginning of this session and everything, it's pretty obvious Jessica's really insecure about her femininity. Okay. Mm-hmm. Stereotypical mm -hmm. oh, 90s teenager in Japan, but of well, course 80s. she's a rich kid. She's practically just stuck. Alright. It's also sort of hilarious that... <laughs> Actually, yeah. She outright just admits that she holds up the whole farce of tough person just to hide her just soft center. Like, she literally admits she's a sundere. Bar none. I put, put it up a fake persona just to make sure she doesn't get hurt. Yeah, that was actually pretty interesting on that part. I also think it's actually pretty sweet that Beatrice is actually getting along with Shannon. Just like Ursula with Ariel. Yeah, I'm surprised that didn't. The that Ursula like that's comparison a... didn't really. It crossed my mind that's for sure. A... No. I think so. Uh. No, 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 no. Wait, no to the oh, Ursula comparison. Oh, unfortunate souls. Yeah, but this actually looks like a fruitful friendship, other than something that's just manipulative and hell. I mean, yeah. it does They're seem like witches. Beatrice is, like, don't going two-faced about it, doesn't she? Yeah, like, she's she laughing, is. looking at it. Like, laughing about how this is gonna turn out. I think we've already discovered in the end discussed that Beatrice is a complicated bee. One minute she could actually go ahead and just show that she does care about Shannon as a friend, or actually is grateful that Shannon is the first person, possibly, to actually accept and thank her for her magic. You don't think it's a bit? You don't think that she's just lying? No. I think well, her whole... Yes, oh, sorry, and you no. go first. Yes and no. I think her whole, like, tough person, like, oh, I just want to see people, like, freak out because they can't be lovers was just to... Fight like a, can a cannon, 
breaking her brooch. That's possible. Mm-hmm. Although, what was that last bit where she's like, oh, I can't wait for the banquet to begin, cat. I think that could just were... mean she wants to play. She means the death game. That is what she's referring to, yes. Which, you know, it's always fun. Like, if she does care about Shannon, that's definitely a weird way to go about it by getting her to sand her own face off. No, but this also actually adds a little bit into my theory from the other episode about how Shannon was possessed or somehow coerced by Beatrice into committing the first act. Sounds like it could be I manipulative. That, Shelly, like, by the way, is it, are you like rubbing your microphone? Because they keep on hearing like a sound. Uh, no. Oh, okay, then I don't know what that is. Uh, I just want to say really quickly, I'm back. Uh, thank you for thank you to Raman918 for following us. I appreciate that. Oh, cool. Uh, wait. Cool. Thank you. Anyway, I'm not saying it's 100% certain, but this does add an extra layer of Beatrice possibly exerting more influence over Shannon than we've seen before. Meaning, my theory does gain a little water, but not enough traction to actually keep it above for me to keep it floating. Yeah, um, I had a theory, I'm not sure if I had it or someone else had it, but the idea that Shannon wasn't supposed to die in the first set of murders. Mm, that she no, we stumbled upon... I the same thing. Uh, yeah, like, she stumbled upon Beatrice killing people, and she's like, whoops, well, gotta, d gotta do you too. Mm, that's where I have to say it differs a bit. So... I'm also actually good to con I'm also actually interested. Beatrice mentioned that there was a wavelength. This means Maria was right. And this does feed back into a whole point of how everyone has their own wavelength, be it spiritually or magically or anywise. Mm -hmm. Meaning only certain people can see Beatrice, but only if they have the proper wavelength to do so. Kenzo can't see her because his magic is here is equal to shit. So he can't see her. He's not on the same wavelength. Which means Battler is the same way. Makes me wonder if that's just genetic in the Yoshida Mia family. Possible. Okay, so, so far, the only people who can see her is Maria and the Serpents, right? Maria, Shannon, Cannon. So far, those I guess Kumasawa, can... too, probably. Quite possibly. It could also bear in mind that anyone of a higher blood or anyone who's born from anyone who with the lowest chance of seeing magic or lower chance of that wavelength has an even lower wavelength as a result. It's possible. Sort of like how the gene pool kind of just dilapidates after a while. Mm, just like most European royals. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Just means the bloodline for that magic gets thinner and thinner until it's pretty much non-existent, and that's where it is with Battler. It's not a matter of he. It's so it's not a matter of he can't believe it exactly. It's a matter of he literally can't see it. I don't even think they even had it at that point with Kenzo. So like maybe he's even reinforcing it with disbelief. Exactly, he's doubling down, and his body's lack of wavelength is actually making it harder on him. But Maria could have just reawoken hers. Or someone that Marosa ended up fucking with. Uh, sorry, I should probably rephrase that. <laughs> Maria's father probably had that same wavelength, so she has a trace of it. We don't know we who her father she is. See it from her from the beginning. Oh yeah, we don't know who Rosa's father, uh, husband was. Yeah. I'd make a joke oh, here, but it's oh. really off color and really bad. I sorry to cut and run, but um, I should probably go to bed soon. Okay. Well, so, All right. I'll see you later. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. See ya. At least you night. know I up with this. Yeah. But what really sells it is that Natsuhi, an outsider of the family, can't see her either. She can feel her influence, but she can't see her. Or sense her, for that matter. Which is interesting. I also wrote down the phrase, and also to run in the sentence, Madness sometimes acts as magical power. Does this mean that Kinzo has purposely worked himself into his fit of madness to actually gain magic power? 
probably. It's kind of like how there's certain types of withers that are basically chaos incarnate because they're using a different type of magic. Talking about Doctor Strange? Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, there's different types of magic, and she did clarify that there's different types of magic that does affect her differently. Like, the Japanese or Eastern magic does weird things to her. To Beatrice. Did she say that it was conflicting with her, or that it just... Just how it was done was fucking with her? A mixture of both. Yeah. ¿Por qué no las dos? Hmm. That's the only Spanish I know. Hmm. Okay. ¿Dónde está la biblioteca? Baño. Where is the hmm. library? Still, another thing was also confirmed for Literally, that what Kinzo feels for Beatrice isn't love. It's desire and lust. He is a simp, technically, on that point. Well, yes, and at the same time, what he's experiencing isn't a desire of love. It's a desire of human greed. He literally wants Beatrice all to himself. I like and a dragon being with selfish by being greedy through this. I like a dragon with gold. Exactly. He wants to covet her beauty and instead loves the idea of her, not her as an actual being. It's not love, it's desire. He is blinded to her love. He's also blinded to his own notions and his senses. But yeah, he's rich. The irony of it all. Mm, I wouldn't... Actually, yeah, that does qualify as irony. That's big-time irony. I also did some extra research on a Shinto shrine with the mirror. It turns out... And I actually do have backup for this. The best part is, all I had to do was just dip back into my notes I took back at college. We actually discussed Shintoism at length over and whenever I was studying my minor. Hmm. Well, for one, my minor, well, I dual minored. One was in art. The other one was in AC, was in Asiatic studies and culture. Yeah, it's a possibility. Went to a liberal arts college. Mirrors inside of a Shinto shrine often act as gates or unions of the divine. It's often said that those sorts of mirrors and things are often act as a portal or reflection of the spirit world. Not essentially that they're trapped inside, but that you can use them as a two-way mirror to communicate. So Beatrice's explanation of spirits and things between the aisles actually converting into this mirror made sense. What I'm interested in now is, what could have possibly happened on those islands that required so many... Rather, not required. Left so many souls in a desolate position. Probably selling off a demon. No, that sounds... I wouldn't say that. Souls can't just refer to gods and demons. It can also refer to humans. And where there is a place of human ex and crazy human suffering, there's always a place of demons that want to feed off of that suffering. So what could have possibly happened to humans on these isles that caused them to put a shrine there in the first place? Probably some type of sacrifice. This isn't Higurashi. You don't know. I, I think we do. I think we've been told multiple times by the people that know the Umineko that it's I'm not, not Higurashi. I'm not saying about Higurashi in general, but something that, else. Uh, they are two different series with different different rules apply to them. <sighs> and we have stated as such multiple times. But feel free, I'll feel free to mention it again if need be. Mm. And by that I mean necessarily, it's not a. Ow! Fuck! Oh, I just scratched myself with my nails and they're sharp as balls! Ouch! How often are balls sharp? Not very. That is a good question. I don't know. How He's often not are calm. balls cold? <laughs> anyway. She said the shrine was meant to help detour evil spirits and calm the souls of those in other islands. And it did have the same effect of sealing Beatrice and getting stuck to the island. 
which makes sense. Mirrors are also used to bind. So, when it's said, if you just approach a mirror, the world of light's restored and you can actually see onto the other side. Huh. Whoa, who left? Her. I think what? Charlie did. He, had, he said he had the head off. No, but Charlie, Charlie already left. left a while ago. Who left? Uh, uh, Noir. Noir. Oh, yeah, I said that. I guess Noir had to be. Uh, Crimson was right. My bad. In many ways. There also myth. There is also a Western myth involving mirrors. Rather, there's also one in here in the South. Whenever somebody dies, we always make sure to cover up mirrors at their wakes, because we're always afraid that their souls could possibly be drawn through the mirror into the human world. It's a thing. It, it's a thing. It's a okay. super thing, but it's a thing. Yeah. <sighs> so I think that the mirror has significance to like Western culture and stuff like that. I'd be lying if I said I didn't think so. Uh. Uh. Not to mention... Mirrors are also said to reveal the truth of any given situation. That's why they always say if you see something in the mirror that isn't behind you, you should immediately call a priest. Or double guess where you are, cause Jesus Christ. Noir is back. Trouble Noir? Back again. I think he may have... Do you have internet trouble, Noir? Oh, it's fine. fine. Oh, uh, uh, okay, that makes sense. Now I'm hungry, even though I ate dinner. Oh. There's also an old custom in Buddhism where if you hang a circular mirror over a door that has... Is attached to a house that has a triangular roof, you can help to ward off spirits. But I doubt anything of what this here involves Buddhism. More Shinto and Western. Yep. Yeah. Anything else? Hmm. Do we, do we can we talk about how Cannon is starting to get weird with the fact that we think he he starts to think he's literally furniture? I, I don't think he literally thinks he's furniture. I mean, it's I like actually got a bit of a sad theory on that one. Bear with me. Also, before you start the sad theory, fuck you, Crimson. Cannon is not an incel. What the fuck are you talking about? He's not an incel, and that is very rude to go ahead and call him so. Okay, he's not incel. <laughs> Also, the way the canon's instinctively distrusting Beatrice, it seems he has problems with outside authority figure. Plus, he's keeping himself guarded, reserved, right to the point where he's just practically repeating a mantra. It makes me think that somewhere down the line in the Fukuin house, someone probably broke his heart or his mind so far that he literally just started referring to himself as furniture just to feel any sort of comfort. What could have happened to scar him this badly? It's as if he's just retreated to this, and this mindset makes him feel better. He doesn't even understand or doesn't want to understand humanity as himself anymore. Meaning somewhere along the line, he's either lost faith in humanity, lost faith in himself, or... Yes, thank you, that is actually a very good gift that you could go ahead and put in this situation. That was quick. I accidentally uh, post. I accidentally clicked on live general. I wanted to see... <laughs> It he's adamant. Yeah. He's already adamant in not wanting to move his mental state. He's aware and fully conscious of it, but he's actively choosing to not acknowledge it. Like not it recognizing his original name? It No, I do think he acknowledges it. He just chooses to not say it and keep it back down. This isn't lines of brainwashing. This is trauma. What happened to Canon?
Anyone have any ideas? Owie. I mean, we only know as much as it's shown us about his backstory. Uh, mm. there, there might be stuff that alludes to it, but I don't think we've seen it. Bertie Sini has a temper that he can't truly control. Whether it be age, or whether it just be because of all the abuse he gets in the hands of the serv other servants, or by his masters. Part of that could deal with the Fukuin house. Honestly, I feel like the Fukuin house is going to have a little more detail in the future. True, because we have no other information except for that one episode. Exactly. So I think one of these episodes or chapters is going to focus a bit on that. And something tells me it wasn't all sunshine and roses over there either. <sighs> uh, any other theories of the sort? Hmm. I am curious about the non-magic explanation for how some of this stuff can be done, but I'm going to hold off for now. You could just go ahead and simply ascribe it to circumstance and Beatrice being able to read people. Uh, nah, I'm like, like uh, Canon and uh, Shannon seeing Beatrice at the same time. Like, I wonder if Battler is going to see that in the tea party. Like, if he's seeing this entire story that we're seeing and be able to explain that away. Because afterlife, I got nothing. So, uh, but, like, if you're unsure of it, then that probably means that everyone else is unsure about their theory. So I think you can go ahead if you want to. Yeah, no, I like, no, all I said, no, I said what I said. Like, I just don't, like, I'm wondering, is Battler seeing everything we're seeing whenever he, go, whenever he goes back to the tea party? Like, uh, okay, if you have, like, anything else, don't fucking hold back. I, yeah, I don't know, I'm, I'm not holding back. I, I don't know why he, all right, kind of cool. From we just, we just I don't know why you thought I was holding back. Ah. Well, well anyway. we, it's because, like, uh, a lot of the time, uh, some people uh, kind of just, like, don't share their theories. And I go, uh, Khan does, and we enjoy Khan giving her theories a lot, and, like, we enjoy it, but we don't want you guys to feel like you well, can't here, share Here's this. the thing, <laughs> I, 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 I'm I, viewing that there's a hybrid the here right of, of magic and Definitely. no magic. Like, I think there's supposed to be a non-magic explanation for everything. And so I have to wonder, is Battler seeing the entire story that we're seeing, or is he only going to see our perspective when during the tea party thing? And so is he seeing Shannon looking at Natsui getting hit by the pipe whenever Beatrice is behind her? Is, is uh, he seeing Shannon and Cannon seeing Beatrice at the same time? What? Uh, okay, so is okay, so Battler at the tea party. You remember that, right? Yeah. And he said, okay... Is Battler viewing the same story we're seeing, or is he seeing everything through his perspective, even at the tea parties? I think at the tea parties, perspective is no longer an issue. So he's seeing was... everything. Yeah, but he still chooses to deny her existence. He's just being stubborn as hell. Okay, so I'm wondering, how can he see a situation where Shannon is looking at Natsui with Beatrice behind her, hitting her with a pipe, and saying that's not magic? Because I feel like there's supposed to be a, a non-magic explanation for everything. Because Natsui would feel that if there was no magic. Battler wasn't there for that. No, that's the thing. Whenever we get to the tea party, he, he would have seen that, right? It, yeah. there was, I was going to say, in the first tea there, party, they actually showed him the replay. What? Is Battler seeing the same story we're seeing? Is what I'm asking. In the tea parties. In the scope of the tea parties? I... In the tea party merchant. When, whenever he's debating with Beatrice that there is no magic. I'm gonna have to say... Possibly, but I don't know for sure. Yeah, and that's that's why I'm not saying it as a theory. I'm, I'm just curious. Like, I'm wondering, is he seeing everything we're seeing? Is there a non-explanation, a non-magic explanation for that scene? I think that also raises the question of whose perspective are we seeing the Tea Party from, then? Hmm. Or is it just third-person omniscient? Yeah, I, I just don't know yet. Hmm. One of those unknowns. Should I involve the other discussion? Ouch. Ugh. It was uh, what interesting. It was- sorry, what? Uh, what other discussion? It was also interesting to see a little bit of Persona and Jungian psychology being brought to the forefront here. 
right. Even though it wasn't directly addressed, this uh, that is Jungian concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sense of another self or a separate self. One you Wait. can use as a mask or an alter ego just to go ahead and live out different points. Okay, so you weren't just making a, a persona reference at that time. Literally, no. George Ma- uh, Young is literally what persona Carl is Young. Ba- Ch- Carl Young, whoever, is basically Ow. based around that concept of persona. That's literally yep. the whole concept of the shadow. Mm hmm. You have the self, the shadow, and then you have your own true self. The persona. Yes. Another line I wanted to go ahead and make note of. The past has nothing to do with anything. There was a lot of emphasis placed on that. If it's one thing that this series has already shown, it's that a lot of the actions in the past have led to the points in the present. Meaning those same actions are all going to completely come back at one point or another. Obviously, Kinzo's actions have caused him to become this shallow shell of a man. So of course those actions are important. The same can also be said for whatever happened with Beatrice and how she was exactly summoned. And the same can also be said for Cannon's trauma, if he endured it. I also have a stretch of a theory. Uh, a theory. Go ahead. So, Bob. there's that whole idea of names being important. You can, con- like, in magic, you can control people if you know their true name. It's so, true. I, so I have to wonder, like, uh, Cannon never got controlled by Beatrice, and he also never revealed his true name. Whereas Shannon did, and she, well, she potentially got controlled by Beatrice after she revealed her true name. It's a bit of a stretch, but possible. No, no, I think you're onto something. Beatrice could have third person, it could be the third person omniscient perspective we've been seeing. She could hear and see everything that everyone's doing. So even if she didn't, or no one else was aware of it, she could have heard the true name. Meaning, she could force a different contract on Shannon because she knew her original name. And possibly because she's on the same wavelength as her. I think that she, like, forced a contract with uh, Shannon, but not Sayu. So after she changed her, went back to Sayu, that she forged another contract? I thought it was Sayo. Oh, uh, I forget her name. I thought it was Sayo. Was it Sayo? Uh, it's okay, amazing. yeah, 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 weren't you saying it's Sayo? Okay, yeah, there you go. It is Sayo. 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 Sorry about that. Yeah, it's Sayo. Which means, yeah. The same principle also works for demons. If you can capture in their tr- if you can actually cast their true name at the start, then you can easily control them. It also reminds me of an anime I saw, Tactics. If you give a yokai a name, they become under your con- they become your servant, or at least they get under your control. They have no right to reserve or disregard the name that they're given. Yeah, that's pretty common in most animes about that. Uh, would you believe I found this out through Warhammer? I found this out through tactics. I actually figured it out for other means. You know which one? Monster. Hmm. Uh- also, as a little bit of a minor note before I go into the other parts of this, uh, nothing more than a domestic duck? That's because domesticated ducks are not shown how to fly. It, I mean, if, yeah. you've seen the movie, if you've seen the movie Fly Away Home, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. What, what do you mean? The, the, one the, the K&A and geese one? It, yeah. Yes. Huh, I remember that movie. I watched that a lot, actually. I also found something that, that Roboot said earlier was very interesting. Kumasawa is like a fourth wall commentator or like a Grecian muse or the chorus of a Greek tragedy. Oh, she yeah. comes in and explains her own, <laughs> explains and just laments, and then she leaves immediately. Yeah, there's always this Almost fourth narrative. This, yeah, it's like Ryukishi's writing this out as a Grecian tragedy. It is kind well, of like it. seems to be. The first episode had more of the shakes had more of a oh what's the word I'm looking for? It did have more of a Western mystery theater vibe, but this episode feels more like it's a Grecian tragedy, like setting up the characters to fail. Sort of, yes. So expect a lot of betrayals in the second half. 
<sighs> and possibly a lot more soliloquies than what we've already seen so far. Yeah, I can see that happening. Something else I also find interesting. George is dead set on actually proposing to Shannon. Can I differ he's from episode actively, one? He's actively taking steps to change fate. Do you think Bern Castell is also watching all of this as we speak? Mm. Probably seeing as much as Beatrice is. Probably is watching it as much as anyone else. Meaning, she'd probably take a special interest in the people here who are also trying to break their fate, despite it always rolling up as uneven or impossible. Kind of like facing against Beatrice? Well, I mean just their fates in general, even if Beatrice wasn't involved. Jessica is also trying to rise up against her fate, and George is also trying to do the same thing. Something tells me Vern Castell would probably be more entertained now than ever, given that she can find characters in a story like this that she can relate to. Look at this from her perspective. Because she's not a Rika anymore. She knows and retains Rika's memories, but she's Vern Castell. She re have me Rika's memories? This is a different world. She no, could I... pos she could possess Rika's memories, but she could be a different Rika altogether. I've said this several times before. She's a different. This isn't I... Higarashi. I I can say this as many times as I need to, but Higarashi and Umineko have very a very unique set of rules that are very different. Mm, allow I'm me to. Not... Allow yeah. me to regain. Allow me to keep this as just this minor theory on my part, then, gentlemen. Hmm. It could be that Burn Castell is also just enjoying this and getting as much a chuckle out of this as Beatrice, and she wants to ham it up as much as possible for her guest. But still, something about the inclusion of that shrine on the islands doesn't set right with me. And the depths of Kinzo's madness. That's not the depths of just one man who's only done magic research. What else has he done? He's fucking lost it. Even more so. What happened to Kenneth? What do you guys think? I'm still fear coming up with my theories, but overall, I already explained my point of view. I got nothing, really. Hmm. Nope. Maybe Cannon got the splayed piggy. Who knows? Okay, I actually did forget about that until you had to bring it up, so thank you oh. and curse you. That, that orphanage scene was rough. Yeah, it was. I think we can all agree that was rough. Oh, God, my shoulder's itchy. Yeah, he has a bad view on orphanage because Japan's view on adoption is pretty bad. Well, he was also a social worker, so what can you do? Yeah. Hmm. So I assume we're done talking about uh, Umaneko stuff, because you guys are kind of dipping into Higarashi shit now, yeah? Yeah. There was yeah. one last thing I wanted to mention. Okay. It's pretty interesting that Canon and Shannon are having two reverse effects for this. The seeds of love have been sown, but for Shannon, it's like the coin's coming heads up, but for Canon, it's tails. Hmm. It seems interesting, and it's a very interesting contrast. I want to see where this goes. Like he's denying the love that he feels from another character, but it's going to go into a different direction. Oh, uh, well, we're going to see... Well, well, we maybe we'll we'll see more about that theory in the next episode or the next uh, session of Umineko. What? So uh, we will, I imagine, we will hopefully see you all on thir on not Thursday, Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, mm -hmm. That'd be neat. Yeah. All right. Uh, that'll be it for tonight. See you guys later. Yeah. Sweet. Bye. -bye.